everybody. Welcome to the 2019 high school football season. I'm Jared Stewart alongside Josh Messerly and Marion Royster. Tonight, we have a big one for you. Beautiful night to start off the high school football season. At least we, we hope it's going to be a beautiful night. We're at Fulton Field where the Lancaster Golden Gales will take on the Bishop Watterson Eagles. We welcome you into the Personal Touch Party Rentals pregame show. Let's bring in Josh to talk about Bishop Watterson. Now, this is a team finished 5-5 five and five last year. Typically, that's not where you want to finish. However, they feel pretty good about their finish after, you know, they, they won their last three ball games. So they're kind of on a high going into the season. Right. You uh, finish with your last three wins. That's huge. Also, they lost their quarterback, uh, Jay Coing, in week number seven, getting him back for this year. He had 1,300 yards last year and seven touchdowns in that short amount of time. Let's bring in Marion to talk about the host team, the Lancaster Golden Gales. On the opposite end of that, the Gales had a great year. Uh, they started off poorly, 0-3, went on a nice roll, won, th won six in a row, but just barely missed the playoffs, even though they won their division of the OCC with Reynoldsburg. This is a team that there's a lot of question marks. They weren't very happy with the outcome of their, their last scrimmage. How is that uh, going to affect them on opening night tonight? Well, I think they can power through that. You know, when you have a lot of new players coming in, a completely new backfield for the Golden Gales this year, um, there's going to be some growing pains, but I think they'll be okay. They have a new starting quarterback, junior Titan Johnson. Um, he seems to be a really good player. I think he's going to get everything up under him. So I think the key for Lancaster tonight is just to start fast and not get off to that slow start that they did last season because, as you said, it really did cost them. Ready to tee it up and kick it off for the 2019 high school football season. It's the Gales and the Eagles coming up next. Stay with us on the Buffalo Wild Wings High School Football Game of the Week. Hi, I'm Carol Whittington, and I would like to invite you to stop by Personal Touch Party Rentals and Events, located at 1540 Hubbard Drive in Lancaster. We are a small family-owned business and have been servicing the Central Ohio and Hawking Hills area since 2003. Graduations with a personal touch, weddings with a personal touch, corporate events with a personal touch. Please call us today for all your party rental needs, 740-689-6991. Hi, I'm Amanda Wattenberg, Regional Director at Ohio Guidestone. Do you or does someone you know have a substance abuse disorder? Have you been thinking about getting help, but don't know where to start? It takes a lot of courage to ask for help, but it's the most important step you can take. If you think you know everything that's available in Fairfield County, think again. Like other chronic diseases, addiction can be managed successfully. Treatment enables people to counteract addiction's powerful, disruptive effects on the brain's behavior and regain control of their lives. Even if it takes multiple attempts, treatment does work and people do recover from addiction every day. So keep trying because your life matters. You matter and we're here to help. Call 211 and ask for the treatment resources available right here in Fairfield County. This message is brought to you by the Fairfield County Adam H. Board. High School Football Game of the Week. Brought to you by Fairfield Medical Center, Ohio University Lancaster, Standing Stone Bank, North Body Shop, Dawn's Furniture, South Central Power, the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities, Fairfield National Bank, Jeffrey Wilson DDS, Matt Taylor Kia, Fairfield County Adam H., the Frankie Smith Funeral Home, Fairfield County Parks, the Edwards Insurance Agency, Dagger Law, the Carriage Company, Connor Insurance Agency, Personal Touch Party Rentals and Events, the Huddle Tire Company, Fairfield Federal, Lines Auto Service, 
Sheridan Funeral Home and Buckeye Lake Marina. Welcome back to Fulton Field, where the Lancaster Golden Gales will open up their season with the Bishop Waterson Eagles. Jared Stewart alongside Marion Royster. Down on the field, we have Josh Messerly. Let's get into the keys of the game, Marion. Brought to you by North Body Shop, providing quality customer service, parts, and reliability. Since 1979, owner Mark North will provide you with a free written warranty on each estimate. That's Mark North of North Body Shop. He'll treat you right. Yeah, I think there are a lot of keys to the game tonight, Jared. First and foremost with Lancaster, I think they really want to try to pound the ball, run it at Watterson, really keep them on their heels, uh, and really allow their new quarterback, Titan Johnson, to kind of play with himself and let the game come to him. For the Bishop Watterson Eagles, I think the, the important thing is really to keep those Gales off balance. Yeah. Um, even though they run a spread offense, they can still run the ball very well out of those spread sets. Um, you know, they've got a lot of ways they can they can attack Lancaster, throwing the ball short, throwing the ball long. Again, as we talked about in the pregame, they got a great quarterback in Hoying. So we'll see how it goes tonight. Tonight's kickoff is brought to you by Sheridan Funeral Home. Sheridan Funeral Home is proud to be supporting high school football. They've been serving the communities of Lancaster and Fairfield County for over 100 years. For the Gales, set to do the kicking he is number 82, Philip Slater. He's a junior returning for the Gales, back deep for Bishop Waterson. This is going to be a, a tough task all night, Marion, to see those gold numbers on the white jerseys. Yeah, quite the contrast. Yeah. We'll just rely on Josh a lot down on the field. There we go. Kick goes into the end zone for a touchback, and let's uh, let's bring in Josh. Josh, uh, what's, the, what's the atmosphere like for the Golden Gales down there on, on week number one? Very electric, as you would expect. Everybody pumped and ready to go. I'm, I'm ready to go here on the sideline. <laughs> Before we get uh, too far into this game, we want to say, of course, uh, the Golden Gales, a um, little bit heavy hearts uh, playing this first game of the 2019 season without uh, Coach Corey Miller, who passed away in January. Uh, and he was a big part of this uh, especially the offense for the Lancaster Golden Gales for the last several years and was actually at a coaching clinic um, up in Cleveland in January and just tragically just passed away in his sleep. And so I know that uh, he's in the hearts of all these Gale players. We want to send our, our best out to Coach Miller's family. Looks like already we had a penalty. Josh, I didn't even see what that was. I missed it. It was on the far sideline, but it was a dead ball personal foul against Watterson. So wow. they're going to start backed up. Hoying out of the shotgun, as he will be pretty much all night tonight. Flanking him to his right is Tommy Bear, the six foot, 205 pound senior captain of this Eagles football team. Nice job defensively coming in there was Curtis Young. A great job by the Gales there. Great pursuit. Uh, didn't give those. Uh, didn't give the, the Waterson receiver there a chance to even really get off the ball. So we'll see if they can continue that intensity all night. Looking at the all-time record between these two teams, the Gales have a slight edge, 15-10-1 all-time. Second down and 10. Hoying with five receivers out there. Short hitter to number 23, Andrew Bettendorf. Bettendorf does a nice job turning that into positive yardage and getting the first down. Great job there on the wide receiver screen there by the Eagles. Uh, also a great block out wide by Blair. Uh, did a really nice job. He's a really versatile football player, Jared. Uh, runs the ball really well, but also blocks well also. First and 10, Eagles at their own 24-yard line. Hoying looking to pass again. This time it's his tight end. That's Davis Boone. Davis had 34 receptions for 301 yards and four touchdowns last year out of that tight end spot. Yeah, yeah, and, and the Gales, or I'm sorry, excuse me, the, the Eagles there, they really like to take advantage of their tight ends and attack the middle of the field. Uh, he's a key asset for them. Again, as you said, had a nice season last season. I'm sure they'll try to continue that this season. And looks like a little bit of confusion over on the far sideline with the chains. It was a first down on that reception, just getting them moved late. But the referee winds the clock, and we're back underway. Here's uh, Boone again, and this time the Gales swarming. Leading the charge that time for the Gales, Tristan Rothenberger. Front seven for Lancaster, definitely the strength of this team, and right, right now we're seeing the linebackers flowing very well to the football. Josh, it looks like uh, we have an injury already for the Gales coming out of the game. I think that's Riley Post and a sophomore. Yeah, that would be a big blow to their secondary. Favoring an arm or a hand, that would definitely be a big blow for them. That pass caught by Tyler Young. 
Young does a lot of double duty. Had a great year receiving the football, but also led them in tackles last year on defense, Marion. Yeah, yeah, another complete player. You see a lot of that on the Watterson team. There are a lot of guys that play both ways and are really good on both sides of the ball. It's, it's really strength of the Watterson team when you don't have the numbers that maybe some bigger schools do. Yep. Third and five, Hoying. Again, nice job defensively that time. Is that Max Hamilton out there, I believe, 15? Or is that Casey Fink, number 12, on the tackle? It's 12, Fink. Brings up a fourth down and five, and most likely a punting situation here for Bishop Watterson. Nice job by the Lancaster corners early. You know, they, they were going to be tested. I'm sure they knew that coming in. Watterson did try, you know, a lot of, you know, quick screens and things like that. And other than that one receive, wide receiver screen that went for a first down, they did a really nice job on that series. Max Hamilton stands at his own 25-yard line to receive the punt. He's got lightning speed. Watch out. We saw him return some last year. We'll see if he can do it again here. Low snap. Nice job by the punter to get it away and a great punt. Hamilton takes it and is hit immediately, but he gets out of it. Hamilton, here he comes to the near side. And we've got a flag, probably going to be a block in the back, and Hamilton loses the football at the end of the play. Uh-oh. And waiting to see the official call. Are they going to give it to Watterson? Looks Nobody's like made a motion yet. Oh. Here's the replay. Excellent job breaking the tackle there by Hamilton. And you called it, Jared. Once he gets to the outside, he's really got yeah. some great speed. So credit that uh, Eagle uh, special teams unit to be able to at least use that. Oh, looks like it might yeah, have been the block blind there. side block. Yeah, yeah. Got a personal foul on the Gales. I still have not seen a call whose football it is. I guess it is going to be Gale football. Mm -hmm. Replay tonight brought to you by Matt, Matt Taylor Kia. It's a new and used car dealership serving dri drivers from Lancaster, Columbus, and surrounding communities. They not only supply local drivers with the latest Kia car and crossover SUV models at affordable prices, but they offer top quality auto service, genuine Kia parts, and more. They also use the power of True Car, Auto Trader, and KBB to set a great low quote on every vehicle. They even stand by that quote for 30 days after your purchase. Learn more at matttaylorkia.com or by phone 740-652-6242. On snap number one for the Gales, it's a bad exchange from the center and the new quarterback, Titan Johnson. Guys got an injury update on Riley Post, and uh, he just went off to the locker room with the trainers. They were looking at his left forearm. They also had an ice bag on it as he was walking to the locker room, so not a good right now. Definitely not a good sign. Riley is a three-sport athlete and never, never want to see that any time, but especially week number one early in the game. So hopefully Riley will be okay. Carson Rainier on the carry and has hit immediately. 77 for the Eagles, Mason Graney. We already talked about him earlier as one of the captains of this football team. Yes, he is, and he's a really good football player as well. And I tell you, it's, it's a real um, credit, again, the, the Eagle defense here, they don't really go very big. Yeah. Um, don't have a lot of big guys, and Lankster certainly has the size advantage, but again, if they can shoot those gaps and play fast with themselves, I think they can have some success tonight. Here's Johnson out of the shotgun. Got a man out there, that's Hamilton! Oh, it's in and out of his hands! I think he knew he's got a step on his defender, and he thought about it a little too soon, and the Gales are going to have to punt. And I could be mistaken, Jared, but I think the cornerback, 20, I think it was 25, uh, Samuel Imtar, might have gotten a hand on that just ever so slightly. And when you're a receiver, yeah. you know, it only takes the, just a little bit to knock off your concentration. Certainly, I'm sure Hamilton still thinks he should have caught that ball, and he's going to, you know, really, you know, might be hard on himself. But again, just a little bit can throw off your concentration. It looks like it might have on that play. How about the, uh, the throw from Titan Johnson, uh, his first opportunity this year, and uh, right on the money, good, look good. Excellent throw, excellent throw. He's got to feel good about that again. Curtis Young gets the punt away, end over end, but it's a low punt, returnable for the Eagles. On the return, this is Tyler Young, and he gets out across the 50, but we have a flag on the play. Looks like we might have another block in the back there, Jared. Yeah, flags all over the place. There definitely there's a couple of blocks in the back, and they got their choice on that, I yeah. think. Right. Always be expected to see a lot of uh, a lot of the yellow hankies on the field early in the season, right, Josh? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you, you're going to expect a lot of sloppy play early on, even with playing three or four preseason games. Yeah. But it, it's just the way it goes. 
And our officiating crew, sorry, Marion, our officiating crew tonight is brought to you by Don's Furniture and Mattress, located at 1118 East Main Street in Lancaster. We'll get a check of uh, those guys, who they are in just a moment. After this play, we'll tell you who our officiating crew is. First and 10 Eagles at their own 43-yard line. Seven thirty-seven to play in the first quarter. No score here at Fulton Field. Hoying to pass. One-on-one -on -one coverage and just overthrows his intended receiver, Samuel in Intahar. Yeah, and Hoying did a nice job with the pump fake there. It certainly uh, uh, did pay dividends as the corner did bite when yep. he did do the shoulder fake. Um, unfortunately, just overshot his receiver there, Intar. I'm um, sure he'd like to have that one back, but I wouldn't be surprised to see them go back to that play and take another deep shot here later on. Let's get a look at that officiating crew tonight. And yeah, we got the officiating crew tonight. The referee you have is John Winston. Our, our umpire is Gene Nine. Our line, linesman is Jeff Nye. Lines judge Aaron Wall, and our back judge is TJ Lyons. Here's a short pass, but turned into a long gain for number three. That's Cam Nicholson. He's a transfer from Dublin Scioto. Now, let's talk about that. Josh, uh, let's bring you in for this conversation as well. The uh, OHSAA has now enacted a, a new rule on transfers. It used to be, it's, it's actually changed several times over the last several years. <laughs> used to be a player could ha would have to sit out the first half of season. Now they have to sit out the second half. So Nicholson is only available for the first five games. Right, and I, I do like that rule because you see a lot of times where uh, players make a difference, especially later in the year, affecting playoff positions and in the playoff as well. So I do like the new rule. Yeah. Some uh, difficulties trying to figure out who's else. Is reverse. Tyler Young getting on the loose to the 20, 15, 10. One man to beat. Max Hamilton knocks him out of bounds inside the five. Great play call by the Eagles there. Certainly caught Lancaster off guard. They went with the, uh, looked like they were going to sweep to the right side of the field. He came around with the end around, pitched it, and uh, uh, able to get a huge chunk of yardage there. Almost scored, uh, but, but a great play call. Yeah. So Watterson in striking distance now, inside the five. First and goal at the four, 6.50 to play in the first quarter. And this may be one of the few times we see them come up under center. Usually they're in the shotgun, yeah. but when they get in short yardage, they do go under center. Hoying pitches it out. It's Tommy Bear. Bear into the end zone. Touchdown, Eagles. Nice run. Just a traditional old student body there. Sweep right. Bear was able to run hard, get in the end zone, put his shoulder down, and get in there. For a second, it looked like that toss might be a little high. He almost threw it too high yeah, for his you're running right, back. Exactly. So the Eagles strike first on to kick the extra point. He is number two, Jonah Fortcamp. Here's a replay of that touchdown run. Didn't have a long way to go, but Tommy Bear's a hard runner. Absolutely. He is not a real fast guy, but certainly runs hard downhill yep. and attacks the defense. Port Camp's kick is good, and Bishop Watterson with their first score of the year gives them a 7-0 lead over the Golden Gales here on opening night. Scoreboard sponsor tonight brought to you by Connor Insurance Agency. There's no place like Lancaster, Ohio, and Fairfield County, and like you, owner Sherry Shirley Connor is proud to call them home. She would like to provide you with a superior customer service, professionalism, integrity, and honesty. Learn more at connorinsuranceagency.com. So we... Thank Connor Insurance Agency for jumping on board with us this year for the high school football season. Watterson's head coach, Brian Kennedy, has got to really uh, be excited about that drive there. Again, they ran a really nice play on that reverse. Uh, again, able to get a big, huge chunk of yardage and, um, you know, able to get in the end zone, strike first, get, every, get everything that they wanted out of that drive. Uh, and now the Gales have to respond. So we'll see what happens yep. here. This is Kennedy's third year. First year was 2017. They finished 2-8. and eight. Last year, they rebounded with a 5-5 five and five record, which we mentioned won their Last three games to finish five and five, so they've, uh, they're on the upswing, back up on the upswing, I should say. Yeah, they really are, and I was really excited to see them play tonight. Again, they, yeah. they had you know a lot of young guys that they played last year. I think we talked about that, but all of those sophomores and juniors from last year are now juniors and seniors. So when you, comes in, you, know, you look at those experience. wins that they had in those last three games, you know they, they beat St. Charles thirty-seven to six, they beat Logan fourteen nothing, but they finished the season with probably the biggest win they've had in a few years. 
21-14 over DeSales, who beat Lancaster last year. Absolutely, yeah. That DeSales team was an excellent team. Had a nice season, finished 9-3. and three, So they've got to feel like they can really be in the hunt for that uh, Central Catholic League title. Yeah. Um, a lot of people aren't picking them. Um, you know, DeSales and Hartley are the, you know, the hot picks for that to win that league. Uh, but I think Watterson will be right in it when it's all said and done. A lot of people you know, might be uh, sorry that they uh, uh, weren't taking them seriously earlier in the season. That's right. 6.45 to play in the first quarter. Watterson leads Lancaster 7-0. It's the Gales' second possession of the night. Titan Johnson under center. Junior quarterback for Lancaster. Hand off to Owen Snyder. Snyder around the outside has a first down. Nice run by Owen Snyder. Great run there by Snyder. One thing that always amazes me about Rob Carpenter teams is you know, you hear the old adage, a bevy of running backs. They, they truly have a bevy of running backs. That's <laughs> Shoe's favorite line, but they do. I mean, they, they, it seems like when one guy goes down, they put another guy in. And uh, with this type of offense, you've got to have a lot of fresh legs. Absolutely, absolutely. When you're running the ball, you know, constantly like Lancaster does and like the you know, ground and pound, as they say, it's important to have a stable, as they say, of running backs. And Lancaster certainly has that. Here's the Watterson drive summary. Four plays, 57 yards, 102 off the clock. A short touchdown run to finish it off. On second down, not much going there. And just to go back to those running backs, Jared, and, and really, you know, Lancaster had a complete backfield overhaul with the yes. quarterback uh, as well as, you know, the up back uh, and the two wing backs, that, you know, and they ran that triple option. That timing is so important. Uh, and so, uh, you know, as they did last year, I think they got better as the season went on. I expect the same for this team, um, and it may, you know, pay dividends tonight, but I think as the season goes on, they'll get even better. Second and ten. Johnson keeps it himself and takes a hard hit, but gets out to the 40-yard line. That's a pretty good run there on second and 10. Gets him out to about third and four. Yeah, really nice run. He, he's a good athlete. Yes, he really he is. is. I mean, Tyler Monk, of course, our starting quarterback from last year, had an excellent season, dual threat. Uh, but I don't think they're really going to lose much in, in, with Johnson under center. Uh, he has a, has a potential to have a really nice season. And uh, I, I think, you know, as he plays more, he's going to get more confidence, and that can only mean good things for the Gales. Titan's a good kid. I had him as a freshman in my class. And yeah. I teased him all the time because he would always wear this Michigan Wolverines jersey. He even <laughs> went to a Jim Harbaugh quarterback camp, and I still teased him, but I told him if he ever made it, I would root for him, but not the Wolverines. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> nice conversion there for the Gales. Carson Rainier picks yeah. it up. And you're starting to see, I think, the Gales are getting at a rhythm. You know, they have that first series where, you know, they fumbled the exchange, they got on it, uh, and then they have the drop pass uh, on the deep ball. But uh, now, you know, as, as they're kind of getting their legs up under them, kind of getting used to the flow of the game, starting to move the, the ball a little bit, we'll see how this goes. First and ten right at midfield for the Gales. George Sherrick in motion, handoff right up the middle. This is that Snyder. No, that's Carson Rainier. Good run on first down. And just to add on a point Marion made earlier, guys, uh, you know, talking about rotating different backs in, uh, Hamilton was a guy that they did not show in scrimmages as a wingback. Yeah. And I had an assistant coach tell me tonight that that was a look that they were hoping most teams wouldn't be prepared for. Yeah, adds, the, adds that extra dynamic of speed when yes. Hamilton lines up at that position. Yep. Absolutely. And until they can, you know, feel comfortable with Titan passing the football, you got to use your athletes where you can. Absolutely. Get them the ball any way you can. Yep. Here's Snyder, and he's up close to the first down. He might have got it. I think he did. You know, we, we talked, uh, we've, we've mentioned already quite a bit about losing the skill guys in the backfield for the Golden Gales, and they had a lot of returning linemen. However, one guy that they were really excited about, Quentin Burke, um, unfortunately, Quentin went down with an ACL injury uh, before the season even started at an Ohio State camp. He's been getting a lot of D1 looks, um, including Ohio State. And, uh, man, it, you hate to see that. Quentin's such a great kid. He is suited up on the field, but he will not play. But, obviously, he wants to be there for his teammates. And uh, we actually will talk to him later on in the game. He, is, he I talked to him today, and he, he said, I'd love to come on with you guys. So we'll have Josh track him down. Wait till you hear this kid. He's, he's so impressive to talk to. And here's George Sherrick. Sherrick getting to the outside, to the 20. The 15-10 cuts back in and is taken out of bounds. But a great run by George Sherrick. Sherrick shows some great moves on that play there. You know, that real sh good shiftiness in the hole there. You know, being patient, letting his blocks develop, and then getting it outside and, and making that break right at the right time. 
Uh, almost resulted in a touchdown there. Yeah. Maybe one more break, broken tackle would have got him in, uh, but uh, put uh, the Gales right in position to, to punch this one in. And if I'm not mistaken, I think this is Sherrick's first year playing football. He's always been a basketball guy. I don't think he played freshman and sophomore year, and he's getting it done here tonight. Take one look at him. He looks like a natural Yes, athlete, he does. So that doesn't surprise me. Yep. <laughs> Quiet kid. He hardly ever says a word. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Bring up a second down and goal. Ball spotted at the two-yard line, just outside the two. That offensive line up there, they've got a lot of guys vying for spots on the offensive line. We'll talk about them in a minute, but Dalton Golden, one that's been a mainstay, and Devin Pearson as well. They like to run behind them. Here's Carson Rainier, and he's stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Boy, Gale's caught a break there. It looks like the right side of the line flinched a little bit. Yes, they did. Took the words right out of my mouth there, Josh. <laughs> Very fortunate they didn't get backed up on that play. So third and goal. Also uh, in the offensive line, Anthony Smith, Brendan Hill will get some time, Noah Burnside, Drew Solt. Ty Hedges will get some time on the defensive line. And Simon Voigt lines up over on one of the tackle spots. Here's Sherrick coming left side. Sherrick cuts back to the middle, fighting for yards. Did he get to the goal line? It's close. Very close, and it's going to be fourth down and goal from inside the one. Even going. though Lancaster wasn't able to punch it in on that one, I think that was the right play call. They've oh, got, again, a great size advantage, particularly on the ends. Uh, with their tackles being such large guys, the Watterson ends aren't quite as big. So run right behind those big guys and see if he can get in. Again, just short, but it looks like they're going to go for it, try to punch it in. Here it is. Good look there from, oh, he might have. But he might have already had a knee down. Yeah, on the maybe. replay, it looked like sure. he reached it to the goal line, but I think he might have had a knee down. If this were college or pro, we'd be going to the replay booth. <laughs> Snyder and Rainier right in the backfield. And that time we they have got a flag. Him. That time they got him. Yep. And that's going to change Coach Carpenter's mind about what they're doing. He's going to bring on his field goal unit and give Phillip Slater his first opportunity at three points this year. You know, guys, speaking of replay, they actually can use replay starting this year in the state championship game. Really? New OHSA rule. Wow. <laughs> that should be interesting. How about that? You go the entire season not using it. Right. And then you're able to in the state championship. But yeah. It'll be booth reviews only, not, not <laughs> coach challenges. Okay. <laughs> no hanky throwing out there for, the, for Coach Carpenter or any of the other coaches. Slater's kick is up, and it is good. Ton of leg on that one. Beautiful kick. So with 124 to play in the first quarter, the Gales are on the board. They trail at 7-3, but they've got to feel pretty good about that drive they just put together. Yeah, again, as we were talking earlier, they had to work out the kinks on that first drive. Um, had a, a few unforced errors, but uh, I think they're going to, you know, build off that drive that they just had. Again, even though uh, that false start at the end uh, resulted in them not being able to go for it, but they still got points on the board, still can walk away with some confidence. And again, confidence is key when you got yep. so many young guys playing, guys that haven't played before. They're going to get better as the game goes on. You feel good about that. So you really just want them, again, to, to, to put drives like that together and get some confidence under their belt. So Slater comes back out to the field to kick it off. Gales hoping their defense can get a stop here. After that drive, they'd like to get another shot at it pretty quickly and keep on rolling. You know, the other thing with that uh, that long drive, I'm not sure we haven't seen the time possession yet, but keeps that, uh, that high-powered offense of, of the Watersons off the field when Lancaster can put together drives like that. So, yep. you know, have a player of Hoynes caliber able to, you know, be out there, showcase his talents, uh, and hit that quick strike off, but you keep them off the field, you know, and, and make the game, you know, tire that defense out, make it to your advantage. There's Coach Rob Carpenter on the sideline. Of course, his son Bobby over talking to the offensive lineman, and he's got his son John up in the booth. Good kickoff taken at the one-yard line or inside the one-yard line by number three, Cam Nicholson. And he gets it out just across the 20. Not sure what happened on that one. 
Taking a look at some other games around the area tonight. Bloom Carroll is at Sparta Highland. Fairfield Christian at Newcomerstown. Fairfield Union at New Lexington. Harvest Prep at Eastmore Academy. Heath is at Liberty Union. Independence at Amanda Clear Creek. Licking Valley at Sheridan. Pickerington Central is way on the road. They're in Georgia to play Winter Park, Florida. Pickerington North at Olin Tangy Liberty. Thomas Worthington at Canal Winchester. And West Muskingum at Burn Union. We have one game tomorrow night. I'll tell you about that in a moment. Here's a pass out. Wide open receiver. It looked like Hamilton might have gotten tripped up a little bit. And that allowed his man, Andrew Bettendorf, to get open. But we got like a flag that. back, don't we, Josh? Yeah, we do. Like in the area of a hold. We'll get the call from our officials. Brought to you by Don's Furniture. And it is going to be on Bishop Watterson. Legal man downfield. That Saturday game coming up tomorrow night. Fisher Catholic goes on the road. They will take on Tuscarora Central Catholic. Fulton Fanatics are out in force tonight. You can hear them. To down to our left. That's an impressive student section. They start at the front row, and they have it. All, they mark it off. They send it out. Uh, they blast it out to all the students. Seniors are in the front, then juniors, and sophomores, and freshmen. And they look at that. Yeah, quite all the, the, way whole to the field top. advantage. My goodness, they should be proud of that. <laughs> like to hear them a little louder though. Let's let's get them fired up down there. Josh, maybe you can lead some cheers with them. Well, okay, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> Good uh, gainer right there to get into some positive yardage. Second down and eight coming up for Waterson inside of a minute to play in the first quarter. And that pistol formation again, Waterson likes to use this. Hoying, little pump fake, looking to pass. Great pitch and catch right there to Tyler Young. He is impressive, isn't he, guys? Man, he's he got pinpoint accuracy. I was watching some videos on him this week, and, man, he can he can place it where he wants it, and he's got the receivers that can go get it, too. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Great play, playmakers on the outside. But the thing about Hoyne, he gets rid of the ball so quick. Even last year watching him as a young guy, a sophomore, you usually don't see guys that young um, be so decisive with the football and get it out of the hand so quickly. Yeah. That really makes a difference, you know, to get the ball to your playmakers as quickly as possible. He does a great job of that, and he's got fantastic feet, too. And I mean, vision. moves so well in the pocket, yes, and vision. Thank you, Josh. And, does a nice job. And you can't forget this. He's got good genes as well. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Helps. Yep. If, you, uh, if the name Hoying uh, rings a bell to you, of course, his dad was a – Buckeye quarterback. He's up here in the booth calling the plays for Bishop Watterson and uh, had a lot of success at Ohio State and went on to play in the NFL. And, you know, when, when you grow up with that as your dad, you're yeah. bound to be, you know, something like that on the football field. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, his technique, as we're talking, all this you know, boils down to he has an incredible technique and along with great genes, that makes a really winning combination. Yeah. And he has that. But, uh, yeah, uh, his dad was, you know, was a, a, a great player and he, and a member of some really, really good teams. Yep. Remember those teams with Eddie George and Terry oh, yeah. Glenn and Sean Spring. I mean, just just had an excellent career. Uh, I'm sure it's certainly you know, nice for him to see his son out here uh, having a great season and, and, and doing the things that he's doing on the football field as well. Mario, we've got some sponsors we'd like to say thank you to. And uh, why don't we kick it off with South Central Power? Yeah, South Central Power salutes all linemen. We're so we're proud to present our Lineman of the Week during the 2019 high school football season. Each week we're spotlighting different linemen from South Central Power and a local high school team. Uh, so follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter to see all of our great linemen. Profiles will be available on southcentral.com. South Central Power, we're your hometown energy team. So we will be picking that Lineman of the Week, and then uh, we will get that to South Central Power. And, of course, they'll blast it out on social media. And we will uh, tweet that as well, and it's, it's a great thing because you always get the awards for the skill guys, and those guys up front don't get a whole lot of, uh, a lot of recognition. So we're going to highlight some linemen, and it goes right along hand-in-hand -hand with those uh, hardworking linemen at South Central Power. Absolutely, absolutely. All the work that they do for us uh, in the community, uh, behind the scenes, yep. just like the linemen here, you know, may not get all the glory, but uh, those linemen on the gridiron are, are, are an integral part of, of both teams' success, so well, we'll be honoring them. If you think about it, I mean, it's more than just behind the scenes and, and you know, uh, the good work they do, but they also get a lot of criticism. You know, people notice, <laughs> I, I, honestly, I think yeah. people notice more when they make a mistake or when they don't get the power on quick enough. Here's a pass downfield, and it's going to be pass interference 
on Curtis Young. But, you know, and I, and I realized this when I was watching a junior high game the other night, yeah. you know, you never hear, hey, great block offensive line, but what do you hear? Come on, line block. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so when pe- people's power goes off, what do you hear? Boy, I wish they'd hurry up and get it back That's on. That's right. So, That's right. You know, but we want to do our part to salute them and say thank you for what they do and, uh, of course, salute those offensive linemen throughout the year as well. That's right. Here's a look at that pass interference. Yep, yep. definitely a good call. Yep. But yep. honestly, if he didn't interfere exactly. right there, that could have gone for six. Yeah, it's like I was going to say, sometimes that's the best play. And you have a lot of defensive back coaches that tell their guys, hey, if you're beat, just grab them. Yeah. You know, this isn't the NFL. It's not going to be a spot foul. Take the 15 yards. We'll live to fight another day and keep six points off the board. Yep. That penalty gives them first down and 10 inside Gale territory at the 38-yard line. Tommy Bear in motion. Hoying with an empty backfield passes out to Samuel Intahar, and it's incomplete. I think one of the things we were talking about earlier uh, uh, in the game, Jared, with uh, Watterson really wanting to keep uh, Lancaster off balance, I think they're doing a good job of that tonight. Throwing so many different formations. You've seen Bear, again, it's a, it's a credit to his versatility, a lineup in several different formations. They're motioning him around a lot. Uh, it's it's got to be a nightmare to be a linebacker and find those guys and figure out which way they're going on every play. Second and 10. Handoff right up the middle. Nice job by Bear to – go the opposite direction and he's got a good gainer out across the 25 inside oh. the 25. Great jump cut but it looks like it's coming back. Yeah blocking the back on the receiver out on the edge. Second it'll bring up a second and long situation now. Here's the replay here Jared look again great instincts there by Barry. Yep, right to, there. Yep. Break it to the outside but you see the block in the back probably didn't need to do it uh, but uh, nonetheless, it will be coming back. But I, I'm really impressed by, by Bear tonight. You know, he, as we said in, in, uh, earlier in the game, may not be the, uh, you know, the fastest guy in the world, but he's a heck of an athlete, and he's got great instincts. I mean, just, again, that jump cut that you saw, that's not easy, to, you know, to have that field, to bounce it outside yep. and get those yardage. Second and 20 for the Eagles. Hoying back to pass, looking, looking, has all day. Great job by his offensive line. And he threw it where only one man could get it. He just did what he could yeah. do right there. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a, it's a no play of, of of no result, but again it's a great play because he didn't he didn't take a sack. He moved around when he needed to, and he threw it as you said where nobody could get to it. Either his man was going to get it, or it was or it was going to fall incomplete. So it didn't turn into a negative play, and they you know third and long. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, and here's the replay as he's looking around. Again, great pocket presence, just a slide to the right. Tries to hit his yeah. man, but uh, just misses. On third and 20, they bring in Titan Johnson on an obvious passing situation here, and they bring out Tristan, or, uh, Casey Rainier, Carson Rainier. And Johnson makes the tackle. After a short gain, it'll be a punting situation for the Eagles. There's what we were talking about, Johnson being a great athlete. Yep. Makes a, a really nice open field tackle. Um, you know, make, you know, force the, the Eagles here to punt the ball. Uh, and uh, he'll get the ball back. You know, did himself a favor. Take the ball back on the offensive side and see what he can do uh, with an offensive drive here. And that's not something you see often at Division I guys as a starting quarterback playing on defense. Yeah, you're right. right. Speaks to his athleticism. Josh, I see Quentin Burke. Uh, Wandering around down there yes. close to you. Let's see if we can grab him here shortly and, and grab get a word there. with him. I know he's geared up, but he's ready for you. Nice job by the punter to bring down the snap and then get a great punt away. And Max Hamilton has to fair catch it at about the 12-yard line. Great job by Forkent there. I mean, I, I, I thought for sure that was going to oh, yeah. sail over, over his head. head yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you know, showed again some great athleticism there to, to get up in the air. And not just get up in the air, get the punt off and have a nice one. Right. Uh, so, you know, force the Gales to go about 82 yards here if they can to get the here ball in the end Look at that. Wow. You're right. Yeah, he, went, he got he up. way up to get that thing. <laughs> Who says punters aren't athletes? Yeah, uh, tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> I played with a punter that, that might have been slow, but he was an excellent athlete as well. Would that be uh, Dave Zastadel? Yeah, yeah, at the High University, yep. Well, 19 years in the NFL as well. <laughs> my uh, eighth grade football coach, uh, Bobby Ashley, was a punter at Utah and actually now coaches Portsmouth Notre Dame, who will be coming up here to play on Fulton Field against Fisher Catholic here in two weeks. Ah, full circle, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Got another flag on the play. And I can remember then 
when he was telling us that he punted because he, he was a Megs High School graduate and co- came back to Megs to coach our eighth grade football team. I'm like, you were a punter. I mean, to an eighth grade, this dude was huge. <laughs> yeah. You know? Right. Right. After the penalty, it'll give Lancaster first and five. And they trail at 7-3 with 10 minutes to go in the first half. Johnson will be under center. Right behind him, he's got Sage Hill. Owen Snyder in motion. Here's Johnson. He's got Casey Fink out there, but he overthrows him. Fink did a nice job. He had two guys on it, but he beat them both. Yeah, yeah, he did. And I think if Johnson had to just let that play develop, probably about another half a set, second longer yeah. uh, would have hit it. But, uh, uh, yeah, I understand he was being pressured. So, and again, that's, that's one of those things where you just kind of have to have the feel of it. The uh-huh. longer he's in there, the more he'll know that he can hold that ball for just a tad second longer, even though he might take a hit in the process. But still, you have the opportunity to hit that big play and maybe score six for the Gales. Bring up a second and five. Not a bad situation there with first and five to go for a deep one. Exactly. Why not? Yep. Take a shot at it because you're still on schedule here with second and five. Pick a couple, two, three yard plays. And you got a first down nonetheless. Here's a handoff to, I believe, yeah, Snyder. Owen Snyder, short gain, if any, on the play. Now we'll bring up a third down and five. So no gain. And Snyder's a really great asset for this Lancaster team as well, playing on both sides of the ball. Does a nice job from his linebacker position and really gets those tough yardage for the Gales when they need it. Uh, Debt play didn't go uh, for much there, but uh, he'll be there when they need him, that's for sure. Johnson gives to Snyder and now to George Sherrick, and Sherrick has the first down. Nice little play there. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, if I'm not mistaken, it looks like Sherrick has a really nice role for himself uh, carved out in this offense. Uh-huh. You know, if the trick plays and things like that, counters and misdirections, uh, take advantage of his athleticism. And he did a nice job of it on that play. Got a first down for the Gales, and now they keep the chains moving. Sherrick, a six foot one, 185 pound junior. He's a big boy. He looks bigger than that. I would have guessed he yeah. was bigger from, I, from up here. I think six one. That, that's that's off by a two or three inches, I believe. Yeah. He was at least 6'1 as a freshman, so he's, he's had to have grown in a couple yeah. <laughs> years. Here's Sage Hill on the carry. Sage Hill across the 35, up near another first down. It'll be second short for the Gales. And what a great surge by the right side of that Gale offensive line. I mean, just really just pushed Watterson back, just created what a, a really nice wide seam yep. uh, for the, the fullback to just run off tackle there and, and got some really nice yardage. Nice that, job there. That right side tackle is Dalton Golden. Listen to this, six foot 350. And that'll do and it. That, <laughs> that dude can put up some weight. I believe it. In, I believe in the it. weight room. <laughs> To his left is Noah Burnside. Here's a quick hitter right up the middle, and that's got the first down for the Gales. Nice job there, but again, a little bit of um, just clunkiness, if you will, on the exchange there between Johnson and the fullback. Uh-huh. And again, that, that's part of those growing pains of being, you know, a young quarterback, first-year starter, uh, understanding that mesh of, you know, f- handing it off to the fullback, whether to give it or pull it out of his gut uh, there. You know, you know, the fullback seemed no, almost more to take it from him on that play, uh, but still got the first down nonetheless, a great play, and that'll get smoother as the game goes on. Let me correct myself. To the left of Golden is Anthony Smith. Noah Burnside is on the left side of the line. Here's Hamilton taking the handoff, and that's a short gainer of about one. Clock rolls down to seven and a half minutes to play in the first half. 7-3 is a score. Watterson on top of Lancaster. And again, just chewing up that clock, the Lancaster Golden Gales. I'm, I'm certain that that is a part of their game plan here, again, to keep that Watterson offense off the field, just continuing to run the ball. Um, and, 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 you know, really, you know, win that time of possession battle that's so important in an offense like theirs. Second and nine. Here's Sherrick, and this time wrapped up in the backfield as a flag comes in. Nice job by the Eagle defense there. Evan Segel really, you know, just, just shot the gap there and got there very quickly, didn't give that jet sweep a chance to go anywhere. Can we get a shot down at the uh, Gales bench? Um, Coach Andy Knuckles, 
who uh, actually has not uh, coached the last couple of years. He's been in the he's been in the administrative side and still is one of our assistant principals here at Lancaster High School, who does an outstanding job. And I'll tell you what, when coaching is in the blood, it's in the blood. He's down there coaching them up on the side. He's got the iPad out, showing those defensive linemen and linebackers. Um, some stuff on the iPad, and, and I heard him a little bit ago. My, my head said he's fired up down there. He's got him he going. Is. Yeah, Coach absolutely. Knuckles is fired up. He was the get-back coach back when I was in high school. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the get-back coach. <laughs> I tell you, when he gets that, that face going, and that I mean, oh, yeah. kind of reminds me, it's almost like a Gruden look. I'd definitely get it back is. if he gave yeah. me that look. <laughs> I've seen him give some kids that, that get-back look when they need it in the classroom. <laughs> Second down and 15 for the Gales after the penalty. Shotgun set here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. The snap came and just drilled Owen Snyder, but luckily the Gales fell on it. So miss, messed up snap counter. Owen Snyder was in the wrong spot. Who knows? Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, certainly I, th I think he was supposed to go in motion there, but it, it may have been a you know miscommunication yeah. or maybe timing being off as far as when the ball was supposed to be snapped. Uh, and you don't see Lancaster come out in that shotgun set uh, very often. And unfortunately, you know, plays like that probably won't encourage Coach Copper to, to do it much more. But right. uh, uh, it's, I, I think it's a good thing to, for them to incorporate into the offense when, you, offense when you've got a quarterback with uh, Johnson going. Here they are again. Uh, you know, to give him the ball, you know, in, in the backfield and let him take a look at it. Johnson passes one out to the near side. Max Hamilton out there, but he's out of bounds. He does make the catch, but he's way far out. That's a tough one to make right there. Throwing over that outside shoulder, down the sideline, man-to-man -man coverage. He got it in there, but he's just out of bounds. Yeah, it was. And, and he got some pressure there late by uh, uh, the Watterson defender, Tanner Mercer, it looks like. Uh, got in there and, and may have caused that, that throw to be off a bit and lead him out of bounds. But, uh, you know, you got to take a shot at it, third and long like that. And uh, they'll, they'll punt and, uh, you know, hope the defense can hold again. Curtis Young back to punt. Here's the replay on that pass. Yeah, I mean, it was on the money, but just out of bounds. Another line drive punt end over end, and a good job by the uh, punt team, the coverage team, getting him at the 30-yard line. Guys, I've got uh, senior offensive defensive lineman Quentin Burke down here on the sidelines. Uh, first of all, Quentin, uh, how's the knee doing? Uh, it's doing very well, thank you. Uh, tell us uh, exactly how did it happen. I know you were at the Ohio State camp, but can you like, walk us through how that ha happened? Um, I was doing a uh, sideline shuffle drill, and I stepped wrong and blew out my knee. And how's rehab going right now? It's going very well. Uh, talk to me a little bit about uh, your, your future plans. I know being a senior, this has got to be uh, really difficult for you, uh, you know, not being able to play your senior season. But talk to a little bit about what you're trying to do. Um, right now I'm a preferred walk-on at Ohio State, and um, I'm going to pursue that after high school. And I, I've noticed on the sidelines that you have been uh, working with your teammates and trying to encourage them. Uh, you know, how has that been a different role for you this year? Um, since I can't be out here to help them physically, I have to be here mentally with them and help them get mental reps, uh, let them know what they're doing right and wrong, just help them out and then make sure they're doing the best that they can. All right, Quentin, thank you for the time. Appreciate it. Thanks, Josh. Quentin Burke, what a great kid he is. He's Man, you hate to see that senior season. He's out for the season. And good job defensively right there by Owen Snyder. But Quentin is a six foot four, 300 pounder. When you lose that kind of guy, yeah. you know, that, that's tough. But uh, this offensive and defensive line for the Gales have stepped up and done a nice job. But we wish Quentin the very best in his rehab and as a preferred walk on at Ohio State. He told me as a freshman, you know, I, I teach freshman focus here at the high school. And a lot of kids come in and they have no clue what their plans are for the future. No clue. Quentin on day one said, Mr. Stewart, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to Ohio State. I want to be a doctor, and I hope to play for the Buckeyes. Wow. And look, he's yeah. going to Ohio State. He's, yeah. <laughs> he's going to be wearing a Buckeye uniform as a preferred walk-on, yeah. and he will be a doctor, and he'll be a darn good one yeah. someday too. Yeah. That is a great young man, very smart young man, and we certainly wish him nothing but the best. And the yeah. leadership of him being yeah. able to, you know, it's a tough break for him. But being able to, you know, help the younger guys learn the position yep. and, and teach all that, that's that's definitely going to pay dividends for him down the road, too. How, how many guys do you see that are out with an injury, season-ending injury, that still suit up exactly. on the sideline? Yeah. I mean, he's got the shoulder pads on, the helmet on. He's 
you know, yeah. that, that just tells you what kind of teammate he is. Yeah, yeah. Burke's going to win at life no matter what he does. I mean, you can tell that just by talking to him. And, again, that, that attitude that he has and that motivation is going to carry him through this rehab process and through his career at the next level, yep. which I'm sure will be a good one. He'll overcome this injury and, and do, do very well at Ohio State. I have no doubt about that. Another great punt by Jonah Fortcamp. Let's talk about him. I mean, you know, when you've got, if you're Lancaster, you've got a weapon like Max Hamilton in the backfield to return punts, but he's already had to fair catch, what, three of them now? Yeah. Then your punter is doing an outstanding job. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And even grabbing snaps out of the air yeah. uh, when he has to. Yeah, it's, it's really good. It looks like Fortcamp, like not, not only a good punter, but a good place kicker as well. Yeah. Um, so, again, what, what an asset uh, for the Eagles to have, you know, a guy with that athletic ability. And, again, keep the ball away from the dangerous returners like him. Titan Johnson keeps it himself this time and I thought he was going to get a little more there, but a great job defensively trying to check the numbers at eight. Yeah, it's Henry Blevins. Yeah, Henry Blevins, who's a lacrosse player for Bishop Watterson. This is his first time playing football since his freshman year, and I'll tell you what, he did a great job that time. Yeah, he did do a great job, and, you know, Johnson absolutely made the right play there, pulled it out. Uh, took the ball right off tackle, and you just got to credit the Eagle defense there. You know, made a great play. They were all in position, and it's so important when you're playing a team that runs an offense like Lancaster that the defense be disciplined. Yeah. If you've got your quarterback, you're the quarterback. Dive, dive, pitch man has to have the pitch man. You can't uh, lapse on those. Here's Sherrick following his blockers, trying to get to the outside, and just couldn't get out there quick enough. This time coming in, that's number, is that 81 or 61 for, I think that's 81, Davis 81. Boone. It looks like 81 with the combination of 74 again, Evan, Evan Siegel. The worst jerseys I've seen as far as oh, number yeah. and <laughs> tough. And should, New Albany had white numbers on white jerseys with a thin maroon outline. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's brutal. It's almost like they're trolling yeah. you know, announcers like us. <laughs> Could you imagine if it was mud? If oh, it was gosh. Yeah. Had one of those games before, too. Yeah. Pick North their home jerseys in mud. That was fun. Yep. Yep. Just take a guess. Flip a coin. <laughs> Third down and 11 for the Gales. Clock rolls at 3.20 to play in the first half. They trail at 7-3. Johnson back to pass and intended for Casey Fink, and it's overthrown. Again, great pressure there again, Evan Siegel. We've, we've said his name quite a few times tonight, getting in the backfield there, uh, putting pressure on Johnson. So, you know, even though he has to make a quick throw there, it's, it's not quite on target. And, again, a great job by the corner there to be in position to make it a tough catch for the receiver as well. And they're going to force another punt from this, this Gales uh, offense. Curtis Young back to punt for the Gales. He's yet to hit that boomer like we're used to seeing Curtis Young do. He's had right. a lot of, he's had some line drive end over end kicks. Let's see what he does here. Uh -huh. There we go. That's, That's a little better. One. Yeah. <laughs> Taken at the 20. Out to the 26 and to the 27 yard, that yard line. Brought down by number 44 for the Gales. That's A.J. Locke. 3.03 to play in the first half. Coming up, we want to invite you to stay tuned for our halftime band show. We'll tell you about that and the sponsors of that uh, momentarily. The Band of Gold has been practicing hard every night here after school, and they're ready to show you their, their show. So stay tuned for that coming up in three minutes and three seconds. First and 10, Watterson. Hoying. Hands it off. This is Bear. Bear with a nice hard run out to the 35-yard line. Another thing I'm really noticing about Bear, Bear the first guy never brings him down. Yeah. Seems like they yeah, you're right. the first tackle each time. And that's the mark of a great running back. The first guy never gets you. Yep. Uh, you know, he's, he's done a great job of breaking tackles tonight, running hard, running to daylight, great vision. Just just a really you know great football player. And there's a stat for that, too. Uh, run, run after oh, yeah. something about run after, after first, con yeah. Yeah, first touch Max. or contact. Yep. Yeah. Hoying to pass. And oh, almost intercepted. Who was that? That was Number Casey 12. Fink. Mm -hmm. That's a pick six. If yes, he gets it. yes, yeah, it, it was. So that's that's two that Lancaster, you know, their top receivers, yeah. of course, playing defense now for Fink. But we saw one go through Max Hamilton's arms on offense. It could have been six, and that one could have been six right. for Fink. But, hey, it happens. And it's the first game for them, too. Yeah. You know, yeah, they're, they're both returning. You know, played a lot last year. But it's still, you know, being out there for the first time since last season, got to work some things out. And Eagles are going to go empty backfield here. And knowing those guys, they will come back 
and not even think about that one moving forward. They got to play a lot of game to play, and here's a nice job by the Gale defense, but I think he's got the first down out near the 40-yard line. On the reception is number 23, Andrew Bettendorf. Quarterback there, third and two. Instead of running the ball, we're going to throw a little bubble yeah. screen pick up the first down. <laughs> With an empty backfield, five wide. <laughs> I love it. A former quarterback is calling the plays. Now, but did you love it as a running back, though? Absolutely. <laughs> no. Absolutely. As long as they threw it to you, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> First and ten, Eagles. Hoying back to pass. Again, it's Bettendorf across the middle. Curtis Young on the move to try to get him. Now he breaks the tackle of Casey Fink, and he's across the 50 for a first down. Finally pushed out of bounds by Sam Fink. Great play call there. The crossing routes, you know, taking advantage of uh, uh, keeping the Lancaster linebackers guessing there. Uh, also a great block there by number 81, David Davis Boone. We called his name a couple times uh, in the receiving game. This time he, he makes a great block spring. Could have been very close to a, a block in the back, but he got his head right around, allowed for uh, the Eagles to break a great play there. We have a timeout on the field brought to you by the Carriage Company, located at 1031 North Memorial Drive. You can check out their website at carriagecompany.com. Coming up in just a little bit, we'll have the halftime band show brought to you by Frankie Smith Funeral Home, crematorium monuments, family owned and operated since 1889. Check them out at funeralhome.com. The Frankie Smith Funeral Home, respect for tradition, regard for change. The band show will also be brought to you by Fairfield Federal. When it comes to our customers and our community, we go above and beyond to help personal or business banking. Whatever you need, we take it seriously because we know you do. The difference is clear. Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan specializes in banking that revolves around you. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. First and 10 Eagles, a minute 46 to play in the first half. Watterson leads it 7-3 over the Gales on opening night. Hoying has a man wide open. It's caught at the 30 or the 25 and out of bounds. At the 20 yard line on the reception is number 21, Tyler Young. And even though it just slightly took him out of bounds after he made the catch, what incredible ball, ball placement oh, yeah. by Hoying. I mean, just, just remarkable. Nice job there. Great timing route. Held the ball exactly as long as he needed to and put it right on the money. Young had 15 receptions for 202 yards and a touchdown last year. Here's a replay of that one. Boy, and, precision accuracy. Yeah, but it looked like Hoyne was almost uh, disappointed himself. Yeah. He thought it might have you know, led him too much. Oh, another drop. A little bit behind Samuel Wintahar here. We'll bring up a second down and 10. Stops the clock in a minute 37. And what I like to see there, Hoyne, as soon as he comes back to the huddle, pats him on the helmet, says, don't worry about it. We'll get it back. Yeah. Uh, you love to see a leader and a quarterback, you know, pick up his wide receivers after a tough drop like that, you know, let him know, shake it off, and we're going to be all right. Bear stands to the right of Hoying. And it's overthrown over the head of Bear. Going to bring up a third down and 10. A little bit over 90 seconds here. I know the Eagles are going to want to try to score here, um, but, but uh, they, you know they've got to be conscious of the clock. So first and foremost, they've got to get this first down. Um, see what they can, you know, dial up on a third and ten here, um, and then after that, again, just to be conscious of the clock, make sure that they're not taking too long because you know they want to get as many cracks as they can at it uh, to get it in the end zone. Hoying, looking near the end zone. Good job defensively by. Casey faked to tip it away at the goal line. Yeah, Andrew Bettendorf wanted a flag on that play, but I, I think Fink tied it up just right uh, to get there, come through him as the ball was getting there and knock it down. Here's the replay Let's here. See. Yeah, as we slow it down again, you see that right hand was on the shoulder of, of, of Bettendorf there, but it was timed up exactly when the ball got there, and he's putting his left hand on the ball as he's putting his yeah. right hand on the shoulder. I think it's a good no call by the refs, and it's going to force the Eagles here to try for three. Fort Camp comes on to kick it. And officially, no wind at all. what's that, Josh? No wind at all down here. Good call. Officially, will be a 37-yard field goal attempt. And Coach Carpenter and the Gales want a timeout. So with 1:28 to play in the first half, Watterson trying to boost that lead to a full touchdown with the field goal here. And uh, if Fort Camp kicks like he punts, 
He's got a good chance at this 37 yarder here. Yeah, yeah, they, they should be in good shape there. But just in case they aren't, you know, I understand Coach, Coach Carpenter calling a timeout, letting them have as much time as they can on the clock if they are to get this ball back and see if they can score to take it back the other way. Uh, it's going to be, a, you know, hurry up, and it'll be a lot on Johnson's shoulders. Um, you know, but but it's also a good experience for him to run a two-minute drill, uh, kind of see what happens. Again, they want to just make sure that they take care of the ball, don't do anything stupid, and see how far they can get it, you know, because they've got a good kicking asset on theirs as well. Uh, they can get the ball probably past the 35 or the 30-yard line, might be in range uh, for their kicker, Phil Slater, to take a shot at it. And we have a whistle and a flag. Uh-oh, that's going to back. That's going to be on... Somebody lined up off sides, I think, for wow. Lancaster. I think he caught it on Watterson. Yeah, yeah. you're right, actually. Yeah, it's so that's going to make it a 42-yard attempt now. It looks like they're still staying with the kicking team. Yeah. Good for them. So I think that answers our question there, Jared. Fortune <laughs> probably does kick like he punts. <laughs> It'll be out of the hold of Tommy Bear. And Lancaster comes across early. That's Max Hamilton on the far side. So give him the five back. <laughs> back to a 37-yard attempt. <laughs> And I get it when you're Max Hamilton there, especially <laughs> with as much speed as he has. He probably thinks he can block every single yeah. kick. And I think but he did have a block or two last year. Exactly, exactly. But when you've got a longer field goal like that, the last thing you want to do is give them that five yards back because chances are, again, you're looking at a 40-plus yard field goal. Yep. Good chance they don't miss it anyway. So you just want to you know, play it safe. You, know, you certainly want to, you know, always want them to play hard but not be stupid and give them those five yards back. Good snap, good hold, and plenty of leg for Fort Camp, and it is up and good. He would have made it from 42. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or 52. <You're> right. <laughs> but luckily, like, looks like he would have had any problems with that. Jonah Fort Camp boots it through from 37 to make it a 10-3 game with a minute 24 to play in the first half. Speaking of kickers, we're going to see one uh, really, really good one from Bloom Carroll in uh, Mr. Shirky. He's uh, one of the top in the nation. We've seen him uh, kicking since he was a freshman. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing him as well as his quarterback oh, yeah. uh, here in just a few weeks. Yep, yep. They're loaded. The Bulldogs, again, coming off an excellent season. Bloom Carroll Bulldogs, um, you know, uh, excellent quarterback in Otto Coons. Yep. Um, again, a kicker you said. And, again, they played a, a lot of young guys last year, too, and still had an excellent season, went deep into the playoffs. Uh, so with those guys having an extra year under their belts of experience, you got Coons coming back, you got Cherokee the kicker coming back, a lot of weapons. I'm sure them, as a lot of other uh, Fairfield County teams around here, are looking forward to have a fantastic season this year. Speaking of Bloom Carroll, they lead Highland 10-0, that score in the first quarter. New Lexington leads Fairfield Union 14-6 in the second quarter. It is Heath over Liberty Union 14-7 in the first quarter. Burn Union all over West Munskingham 22-0 in the first quarter as that kickoff goes to the end zone. Newcomers Town over Fairfield Christian, 20 to nothing, also in the first quarter. And Amanda Clear Creek. <laughs> Hello. She's doing some cheering down there. <laughs> Amanda Clear Creek leads uh, Independence, 21 to nothing, near halftime of that one. And here at Fulton Field, 10-3. Bishop Watterson over the Lancaster Golden Gales. A minute 24 to play in the first half. There's the drive summary, nine plays. 74 yards, minute 39 taken off the clock, and a 37-yard field goal for Jonah Fort Camp. First and 10, Lancaster. Joan, or, uh, George Sherrick stands right beside Titan Johnson. Snyder slides across the line. The ball's on the ground. And Watterson, I think, got it. Yeah, they did. Josh, what happened there? Was it a, was it a muff snap? I think or was it, was it a bad a exchange low... from Titan to Sherrick? I think it was a low snap, and, and Titan had a tough time grabbing onto it and, and just uh, couldn't do much with it. And that's well, the last thing you want in that situation. Absolutely. Yeah, very low snap. Almost came down, you know, below his left knee there, Titan. And he got, he did get his left hand on it. Uh, was almost able to get it back up, but by the time he, you know, bobbled it, forced the bobble and wasn't able to get it up to the running back. And ball's on the ground. Watterson's got a chance to, to punch in and get another score uh, right before half. Who'd have thought it? Yeah, plenty of time. Minute 19, ball inside the 20. Hoying looking to pass. 
Has his man over the middle. Nice job. What a job by Davis Boone. Everybody thought after he caught it, he's going to keep on going where his momentum was going to the right, but he cut back to the middle. That got him a few more extra yards. Yeah, I mean, he's really got a knack for that middle of the field. You see so many good tight ends, you know, even for, you know the NFL level and the college level. You know, those guys that really excel at that position have a feel for the middle yeah. of the field. They really know how those linebackers are going to be. They can run those, as they call them, option routes. And maybe they turn in or they turn out depending on, you know, where the linebacker goes, and they know exactly where to run after they catch the ball. Boone, six foot two, 220 pound tight end, caught 34 passes last year for 301 yards and four touchdowns. There's Here he is again inside the five and out of bounds stops the clock. Smart play there by Boone. Worked hard to get out of bounds even though the, you know, the uh, defender there almost brought him down but he you know, managed to fight his way out of bounds, stop the clock. We want to save some precious seconds uh, for the Eagle offense here. His four TDs were the most by any of the receivers for Bishop Watterson last year. Second and goal inside the five. Hoying to pass, and he's got his man. That's Tommy Bear. Touchdown, Bishop Watterson Eagles. Snuck him right out of the backfield, Jared. And again, Bear, you know, does a great job. You know, he, he does such a nice job. He can catch him the football out of the backfield on a nice little swing route. Got him right to the to the to the uh, the flat there. And the other receivers on the outside did a nice job of occupying the corner and the other defenders on the outside there. And Bear, you know, just pitch and catch from that point on. Yep. And that ball comes out so quickly out of Hoying's hands. Oh, yeah. So Fort Camp comes back on to kick the extra point. No doubter. 17-3, 45 seconds to play in the first half. The important thing for Lancaster here is, you know, you had a rough time there. Obviously, you know, the turnover that, that you know, can be a backbreaker, but you, you know, just got to stay within yourself, keep your head up, not, you know, let the, you know, the game avalanche on you, so to yeah. speak, from this point on. Uh, make sure, you know, just get out of here without another, you know, penalty or, or a turnover, even worse. Um, and, you know, come back out and, you know, have another second half that can get you back in this game because you're still in it, you know, 17-3, to three, a lot of football left to play here. Boy, the Watterson Eagles uh, cheering student section already chanting uh, the uh, I believe we'll win cheer. A little <laughs> early for that. <laughs> Pretty sure the scoreboard still says second quarter, not yeah, fourth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll little see. They've, got, they've got some confidence. Yeah. <laughs> Fort Camp to kick it away. Casey Fink and George Sherrick. Bauer, check that. Max Hamilton and George Sherrick back to take it. And it'll be a touchback. Again, that's a weapon. Yeah. You give those guys no chance to return. That's exactly. a big time weapon. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's really as I see a lot of these, you know, high schools around now. It's it's an embarrassment of riches riches at the kicking position. Yeah. I mean, when I was in high school, and you know, I take it back, you know, to, to so long ago, but you know, you didn't see kickers like that. Maybe one or two throughout the state, but again, it seems like there's so many even in our area. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, kickers that just can make 35, 40, 45 yard field goals without you know hardly any problem. It's yeah. just it's really remarkable. And a whistle and a flag before the snap. This is going to be on Lancaster. And just to add on to Marion's point, you know, you really changed the, the field position game because Lancaster's starting at the 20-yard line because he's put it in the back of the end zone. Plus, a couple series ago for Watterson, most teams would have had to go for it on fourth down and yeah. long because right. they don't have a kicker that can make a long field goal. Exactly. You're right. I saw Riley Poston moments ago back on the sideline, his arm in a sling. That's not good news. It is good that he's back out here with his team, but... Arm in a sling, so his return obviously will not happen tonight. The Gales will kneel on it and let the clock run out here in the first half. They won't have to run another play. Yeah, Coach Carpenter waving him over. So the Watterson Eagles with a good first half. Actually, those the last minute of the first half was very good for Bishop Watterson as they put up 10 points in a hurry to take the 17-3 lead into halftime. Yeah, it took advantage of some Lancaster mistakes there, but again, Lancaster just can't get too down on themselves. Again, just have to remember there's a lot of football left to play. Uh, a lot of things can happen. 
And, uh, you know, they've still got, you know, a lot of weapons on, on their side and, uh, you know, should, should result in a good, a good second half if they're able to, you know, put it back together. Opening night here at Fulton Field. It's halftime. The Bishop Watterson Eagles lead the Lancaster Golden Gale 17 to three. Stay tuned. The halftime band show is coming up next, brought to you by Frankie Smith Funeral Home and Fairfield Federal. So stick with us here on the Buffalo Wild Wings High School Football Game of the Week. IVP Sports presents the Buffalo Wild Wings High School Football Game of the Week. Brought to you by Fairfield Medical Center, Ohio University Lancaster, Standing Stone Bank, North Body Shop, Dawn's Furniture, South Central Power, the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities, Fairfield National Bank, Jeffrey Wilson DDS, Matt Taylor Kia, Fairfield County Adam H, the Frankie Smith Funeral Home, Fairfield County Parks, the Edwards Insurance Agency, Dagger Law, the Carriage Company, Connor Insurance Agency, Personal Touch Party Rentals and Events, the Huddle Tire Company, Fairfield Federal, Lines Auto Service, Sheridan Funeral Home, and Buckeye Lake Marina. Come experience the Huddle Tire difference. Locally owned and operated since 1910, we're your independent tire and auto repair shop. We carry all major brands of tires, including Goodyear, Cooper, BF Goodrich, and many more. But we're more than just tires. From safety inspections to alignments, brakes, shocks, and struts, even preventive maintenance, we can handle it all. Enjoy the ride at Huddle Tire Company, 300 South Columbus Street, or we can be reached at our website at huddletire.com. At Dagger Law, we have more than 110 years of combined expertise in nearly every part of law. What I think sets us apart from any other law firm is our ability to work together. With us, you're getting a trusted partner, in addition to a team who can help you with a growing business, changing family, planning your future, or dealing with land issues. It's a challenge every day, and you meet an awful lot of nice people. Your case matters. We'll take the time and the energy um, to ensure that you have a quality experience, quality representation. Whatever you need, we have a lawyer who can help. Dagger Law. Local. Trusted. Experienced. Imagine your possibilities at Ohio University Lancaster Pickerington. With over 250 majors to choose from, I get a great college education at half the price of other schools. A lot of large campuses have huge class sizes where the professors don't even know you. At Ohio University, the classes are very small and the support you have is fantastic. Campus life is awesome. There's always something to do between all the athletic events, student groups, and activities that you can always find your place in. Welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home to Ohio University Lancaster Pickerington. Fairfield Medical Center took care of me like I was family. I was made to feel like I was the only person that they were going to see that day, even though I knew that wasn't the case. Everyone at Fairfield Medical Center was very attentive. They just put my mind at ease. I was there for 12 days, and I felt comfortable there. We were people to them, not a number. They took the time to get to know us, our personalities. Yeah. Well, they saved my life. You know, how do you beat that? I don't know how I could have gotten through it without them. Experience Fairfield Medical Center. There is no place like Lancaster, Ohio and Fairfield County. And like you, I am proud to call them home. As a longtime resident of Lancaster and graduate of Lancaster High School, this community is important to me. And I want to provide superior customer service, professionalism, integrity and honesty at the Connor Insurance Agency. I am committed to supporting local programs and projects through my volunteer work and board membership with several organizations. It has been a great honor to work with all the first responders throughout Lancaster, Fairfield County, and the state of Ohio to put on Kids and Cops Day, to be a part of Shop with a Cop alongside the Lancaster Police Department and JFS, and to help Lancaster Public Education Foundation raise funds to support our local public schools and teachers. These men and women work hard to protect and support our community, and I would like to take this moment to say thank you for all they do. My goal as a business owner and insurance agent is to provide my clients with the most appropriate services and coverage for their needs at a competitive rate. 
As an independent agent, I have several carriers to choose from so I can customize your insurance coverage to fit your needs and desires. I strive to make sure there are no gaps in your coverage that could be harmful and just as important that you are not overinsured. I look forward to serving your insurance needs now and in the future. At Connor Insurance, we are here to serve you by protecting what is important to you. Please contact my office at 740-654-2848 for a full list of services and carriers or visit my website, connorinsuranceagency.com. Welcome back to Fulton Field on a beautiful night here in Lancaster, Ohio for opening night of the 2019 high school football season. The Bishop Water, Water Smeagles lead the Lancaster Golden Gale 17-3 at halftime. I'm Jared Stewart alongside Marion Royster. Down on the field we have Josh Messerly. It's time for the first half summary report brought to you by Fairfield County Parks, inviting you to Harvest Celebration Saturday and Sunday, September 21st and 22nd at Smeck Park in Baltimore. Have fun painting pumpkins, visiting the petting zoo to see the donkeys, alpaca, goats, and more. Try your hand at candle making and take part in the scavenger hunt on Pawpaw Trail. Enjoy music by Clear Creek Grass and Crossroads Agents Bands. Of course, there will be vendors and food trucks. See fairfieldcountyparks.org for details. When we talk about that first half, uh, summarizing it, you know, really close ball game until like the last minute of the, of the first half. Yeah, yeah, really close. And, uh, you know, it just a, a few mistakes by Lancaster proved to be the difference there. That one big turnover we see there. Uh, but other than that, uh, both teams moving the ball pretty well. It's just in, in completely different ways of yeah. doing it. Uh, Lancaster doing all their damage on the ground, of course, and, and Watterson, um, you know, through the air. Uh, but, uh, you, know, you know, we've seen some penalties as well, a little bit sloppy uh, out the gate, which sometimes we expect. Uh, but Watterson, again, has uh, just been able to take care, uh, take advantage of those turnovers and take care of the ball themselves, and that's been the difference. Those first half stats are brought to you by Dr. Jeffrey Wilson, DDS. With over 35 years of experience, Dr. Jeffrey Wilson and his staff are committed to provide the best dental services to their patients. Happy patients make perfect smiles. And Dr. Wilson and his staff will make sure your dental health and comfort is their top concern. Accepting new patients, he is currently located in Bremen, but will be expanding and bringing his years of experience to Lancaster in the fall of 2019. His office can be reached at 740-569-7563 to make an appointment. Boy, we saw some beautiful camera shots from our crew. I want to highlight our crew down on the field, giving you that uh, shot you saw just moments ago with the pylon in there. That's Tom Russo back this year doing the sideline camera. Our camera up in the stands, our middle camera, Jason Roush. Our top camera following all the action. That's Jimmy Spires back with us as well. We've got uh, veteran crew all around. Jimmy Spires has been doing this for 28 years. Wow. Yeah. Congrats, Jimmy. You're doing Congrats. a great job still. Also our crew tonight, Mason Gunther. And in the truck, Donnie Ziegfeld, Bob Competti, Shane Messina, and our stats statistician, couldn't do it without Beth Competti. I don't think we could ask for a nicer night. Just clear, oh, yeah. nice little breeze. Uh, weather just absolutely tremendous tonight. But Josh tells us it's kind of buggy down on the field. Yes, oh, yes. Yeah. It is buggy down here. <laughs> Believe me, I've, time was covered in, uh, in bugs. So yeah. we'll see how that goes here in the second half. <laughs> <laughs> First and 10, Gales to start this second half. I'm going to go back down to Josh here in just a moment. He made a, made a great point before we came back on the air. There's a nice run on first down. And, Josh, what was it you said to us before we went right on the air here in the first half, or the second half, about the Golden Gales in this first drive of the second half? I really think this is a crucial drive for Lancaster. They've got to punch this in to really have a chance here in the second half, just for confidence sake. It's yeah. a, a young team uh, on offense, and really to get that confidence back and punch it in the end zone here on this first drive. Sage Hill on the first carry of the second half to give the Gales a first down. Here's Hill again. Good job by that offensive line, opening up a hole, giving them about four or five. And the one thing I'll say, Jared, not much has changed since the beginning of this game. Lancaster is still getting an amazing push on that right side of the football. Yeah. Uh, those linemen over there, uh, led by big number 73, Dalton Golden, you know, really doing a great job of just making, you know, the, the Waterson defenders just, you know, as they come out of the stance, they're just getting pushed back immediately, getting that surge and allowing, you know, the running backs to go right off of their tail there uh, and get two, three, four, five yards a chunk every time. 
Dominic Carpenter resets to the left side. Sherrick in motion. Here's Titan Johnson going to keep it himself, trying to get to the outside. Great pursuit on the outside by number 21, Tyler Young for the Eagles. Yep, Tyler coming up from his position in the defensive backfield to make that play there. And uh, you're, again, you're starting to see, you know, the, the pursuit of that Eagle defense uh, just getting there so quickly. It might be a good opportunity for the Gales, um, maybe not on this play again with it being third and long, but to surprise them maybe with a play option pass off schedule there or perhaps another misdirection play uh, involving, involving Sherrick. Third down and eight for the Gales. A Titan Johnson falling down, just made an athletic play there to give it off to Sherrick. And Sherrick with a short game. I don't know if somebody stepped on Titan's foot as he was headed back to, to make the handoff. Did you see that, Josh? It looked like an offensive lineman uh, backed into Titan Johnson and it messed up his steps. Yeah, and the unfortunate part here, we'll see it on the replay. It looked like that was going to be a reverse as well. Uh, once the ball was handed to Sherrick, I'm pretty sure he was going to try to hand it. Yep, right there, hand it to number two, Owen Snyder. Yeah. But because the timing was off from that stumble, wasn't able to do so. The whole play's blown up, and now they've got to punt the ball yeah. away. Curtis Young to punt it. Gets the punt away and backs the receiver up to the 25, but it's returnable across the 40 and all the way out to the 45-yard line. Once again, it is Tyler Young on the return. Yeah, very important here, as uh, uh, Josh was talking about. It's so important. You know, even though the, the uh, Gales offense wasn't able to move the ball or get, uh, get any momentum going on that drive, it's equally important here that the defense does not allow Watterson to get on the board here. If they get another touchdown or even a field goal, it could really kill that momentum yeah. and, and really create a, a hole that the Gales may not be able to get out of tonight. Coyne will have Tommy Bear to his right. Hands off to Bear. And Tommy gets out close to the 50, about the 47, 48 yard line. And I, I, I talked before the game how it was really important uh, you know, for the uh, the Watterson Eagles here to, to keep the Gales off balance. There really hasn't been much on the ground. They've been able to do a lot of damage through the air, uh, you know, which you know I'm sure they'll take it however way they can get it. But um, we'll see if they continue to try to establish the running game in this part, part of the game. Here's Bear again up the middle. He's across the 50 and to about the 46 of Lancaster. Tackle made by Curtis Young. Also in there is Zindale Graff. You know, Jared, I just noticed that there's a lot of the Eagle players here that have gold cleats, which, uh, you know, be, being a former player myself yeah. and appreciating style on the field, they look pretty sharp out there with those gold cleats, with the gold helmets contrasting. My son is a seventh grade football player at Thomas Ewing Junior High. Of course, they have the, gold, the uh, Gales colors, and he was so excited to get his first pair of gold cleats this year. <laughs> there you go. Doesn't get to use him much. He's, he stands <laughs> on the sideline quite a bit. Oh. Smallest lineman you'll ever see in your life. But, <laughs> <laughs> but he looks sharp, though. Size of the fight and the dog, not the size of the dog in the fight. Exactly. Right? <laughs> Good defensive stop there for the Gales on third down, bringing up a fourth and one. And it looks like Watterson will bring on the punt team. Great job there by Dalton Golden, stuff in the middle there and uh, stopping the – Watterson offense and getting a big uh, stop for the defense. Max Hamilton will drop back to receive the punt. Looks like Max has some fresh tape around his foot and ankle. Doesn't seem to be hobbling much though. Now he'll come back up to the line of scrimmage. Nobody back there is going to let this punt go. Fort Camp, a nice kick. He's got some guys down there to try to stop it. They're going to let it roll. And it takes a sideways roll and will be downed at the seven yard line. Nice job, <laughs> Jonah Fort Camp. Fort Camp does it again. I tell you what, what a weapon. You know, we, we talked about how important the kicking game is. And, you know, again, not only kicking field goals with such a distance and, and strength and accuracy, yeah. but also in the, in the punting game, making plays constantly. Again, the height on his punts, not allowing the uh, Gill returners to get up under it um, and, and make a nice play. And then there, the pinpoint accuracy to get him inside the 10, you know, forcing them to go 90 plus yards if they want to punch this in the end zone. So Titan Johnson brings him out of the huddle. He's got Carson Rainier right behind him. First and 10 from his own seven yard line. There's a good look right in the helmet of Titan. Sherrick in motion. Here's Rainier. Across the 10 and 
Positive yards there on first down to about the 12. And, you know, again, the Gales, they're, they're getting the push. They're, they're doing really good at the point of attack and the line of scrimmage. Uh, so it's just a matter, again, of eliminating, eliminating those mistakes because it seems like when they do have a mistake, they get off schedule and then they're behind uh, themselves on, on their offensive play calling, and that can sometimes, you know, thwart their drives, unfortunately. Second and five for the Gales. Rainier stays in the backfield. Short gain for the Gales out to about the 15, close to the 15 yard line. Gonna break a third down and short. Was able to talk to Riley Poston's dad as we were heading down uh, at halftime. And he told me that uh, Riley suffered a separated shoulder, but they were able to uh, get it back into place. And actually, he said Riley wanted to go back in the game. Oh, my goodness. Coaches <laughs> and trainers had to say, no, no, that's not a good idea. Yeah. Going to go get an X-ray tomorrow just to make sure there's nothing broken. But they feel like this won't be a long absence for him, which is great news. Yeah, that is really good news. You know, he's a, he's a key part of what they do. So yeah. it's a good thing that uh, he won't be out for any extended period of time, it looks like. On third down and short, they do not pick up that first down. It's going to be fourth and less than a yard, but the Gales backed up too far to go for this one. They're going to have to punt. Yeah, great play there uh, by the Watterson defense. Tyler Young, number 21 specifically. Again, just th they're, they're pursuing so hard um, on that, that Eagle defense, getting there uh, before the Gale uh, running backs have a chance to you know, really get any momentum going, and it's proven to be the difference. Unfortunately, you know, on that third and short, they just couldn't convert it. Boy, how many times have we called Tyler Young's name tonight? Defense and offense. Yeah. Heck of a player. Curtis Young, line drive kick, end over end, and they're going to just let it roll. And the Gales will down it at the 44-yard line. Looks like he didn't get a very good drop on that punt. Yeah. It went off the side of his foot. But again, still took a good bounce and didn't allow the, the returner there to have a, a, any kind of return at all. So yeah. worked out for the Gales either way. And you just wonder how often, you know, he, Curtis is a big, big part of this, this team, both offense and defense. So you wonder how much time they spend in practice, uh, you know, working on, on punts. But... You know, we, we saw him last year boom some. He'll he'll get it back under under control. Oh, yeah, absolutely. No doubt about it. Here's a handoff right up the middle. Tommy Bear. Bear, nice move across midfield to across the 40. Finally brought down at the 34-yard oh. line. And late flags coming in on the Gales. Yeah. May have offsetting here, guys. Had a couple of uh, hits after the whistle. Sam Fink made the tackle. And the unfortunate thing is that Tommy Bear is still down. Uh oh. But it looks like it may be just a cramp. Trainer comes out to check on him. We'll get the uh, call from the official brought to you by Don's Furniture and Mattress. And yes, it is just a cramp. Boy, it is a warm night. You typically get those on warm nights like this. Yep, early in the season. Yep, drinking plenty of water and eating those bananas is, is so important because <laughs> those cramps will come and hit you yeah. and again, it, it's, it's so much pain immediately, but the good thing about it is, is you can get it worked out, hopefully get them walking on the sidelines, it can be at, back in a play or two, hopefully. The penalty was on the Gales. I don't know if we have a replay of it. It was, it was late on the Gales. And that's gonna give Bishop Watterson, excellent field position. Yeah, it looked like one of the Gale players just came in and, and hit Baird in the back when he was oh, on the wow. ground, which is, you know, unfortunate. You know, a little bit of frustration might be setting in for the yep. Gales. Really important that they keep their composure. Again, because this game is, is this close from getting out of hand here. Uh, so that, you know, they've got it, you know, bear down, knuckle down, uh, hopefully hold the Eagles to three here, or perhaps even, you know, you know keep them from scoring at all uh, and, and just try to keep fighting in this football game. First and 10 at the Gale, 19 yard line for the Eagles. <laughs> Officials blow the whistle. It's like an equipment malfunction. Yeah, gonna make, make Andrew Bettendorf jog off the field. Still get a replacement in for him. Looks to be Zach Singer coming in. Watch Davis attack in the middle of the field here. Empty backfield. Bears not in the game. Hoying. Screen pass to Cam Nicholson. Nicholson, nice move. Gets to the end zone. Touchdown. Tiptoed the sideline over there. And he made it in. Fantastic job. Again, running through that first tackler and just refusing to be tackled. 
uh, you know, they've got to bring him down, you know, the Lancaster defenders, and they know that. Uh, you may have a little bit of fatigue setting in here, but, you know, an excellent run nonetheless. Uh, and, uh, you know, nice job there. And the, the Eagles got another touchdown on the board. So Cam Nicholson takes the short pass, turns it into six points. Jonah Fortcamp will come on to kick the extras. I think the Bugs have made it to the press box. I was just going to say that, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> they found their way to us. <laughs> it's about time. <laughs> Actually, it's not that bad here in the second half so far. <laughs> Fort Camp's kick is up and good. And with 4.42 to play in the third quarter, the Bishop Waterson Eagles now lead the Lancaster Golden Gales 24 to nothing. Yeah. I want to say thanks to Standing Stone Bank. Whether you're ready to tackle a mortgage loan or need cash for home improvements, make Standing Stone Bank the key player in your home or business financial plans. Business to business, neighbor to neighbor, let's grow this town together. Standing Stone Bank, an equal housing lender, member FDIC. And Marion, we have Buffalo Wild Wings, who's been doing this for a long time with us, and we want to say thanks to them as well. Absolutely, Jared. Thanks to Larry Tipton and the crew for great food, great service, and the best sports viewing in town. It's all at Buffalo Wild Wings in the Plaza Shopping Center on North Memorial Drive. And remember, every one of our football games will be televised with their instant replay immediate after the game at Buffalo Wild Wings Lancaster location. I tell you what, they get a great crew down there every Friday night uh, after our games or Saturday night. They they put them on the big big screens down there. Usually the teams all go down, the families, and just a great time to go down and watch yourself on TV. Yeah, it's a great atmosphere, and, and we, we really appreciate it. We, we said it there and can't thank uh, Larry Tipton and the folks at, at BW3s enough uh, for, for uh, everything they do for, for our games and for the community there, again, to have that atmosphere uh, for the players and the whole community after those games. We'll check some scores from around the area coming up after this kickoff. Fort Camp kick bounces inside the 10, and Hamilton will let it go into the end zone for a touchback. In the third quarter, Amanda Clear Creek leads Independence 27-6. Also in the third quarter, New Lexington all over Fairfield Union 28-6. It is Newcomerstown beating Fairfield Christian at halftime 34 to nothing. Bloom Carroll leads Highland 24 to nothing. That game's still in the second quarter. It's Heath over Liberty Union 21 to 7 in the second quarter. Burn Union, listen to this score, 42 to nothing over West Muskingum Ooh. in the third quarter. Wow. Burn Union has got a lot of key players returning as well. They uh, you know, certainly look to have a good season. It's, it's a great to see them off to a great start. Can't wait to see the Burn Union and Fisher Catholic matchup. Oh, That's yeah. always an exciting one. Both those teams uh, making, making it to the playoffs last year. Going to be exciting. Titan Johnson looking to pass. Checks down to his short man. That's Casey Fink. Makes a nice catch. That's where the tip drill pays off. And Casey Fink getting all the way up near midfield. Absolutely. And that might have been Lancaster's best looking play all night. Yes. You know, uh, Biggest gainer. Yeah. Titan, Titan Johnson did a nice job of rolling out there. Um, had a shot to take down the field. He could have tried to you know, squeeze it in there to his receiver, but made the right play. Checked down. Allowed his receiver there to catch the ball and make some good yards after the catch. And it looks like we might have another, looks cramp, like it might be yeah. another cramp. Yeah, number 31. Yeah, that's Nathan Brown down there, guys. Looked like he was uh, looking downfield deep to Dominic Carpenter, but he was well covered, and so he just checked down to Casey Fink. A great decision by uh, by Titan Johnson. Right, and we have athletes like Fink and Hamilton, and, you know, those guys, when they have open space like that, just get them the ball and let them, you know, make yards after the catch run, make people miss, and, you know, hopefully, you know, sometimes they can turn those short ones into long ones, yeah. you know, if they're able to get to the corner there. Speaking of sponsors who've been on board uh, with us for a long time, how about Buckeye Lake M Marina? They're tonight's second-half scoreboard sponsor. If you're looking for a new boat, a great pre-owned watercraft, or a place to get parts for your boat, Buckeye Lake Marina has it all. Buckeye Lake is back and better than ever, and the gang of Buckeye Lake Marina looks forward to your support. Tell you what, I've, I've seen some very nice-looking pictures online and uh, on social media, and it looks like uh, Buckeye Lake is definitely back and beautiful this time of year. Actually, all summer long, it's been beautiful. Nice crowds out on the lake. Yeah, yes, it is. Yes, it is. I had the, the for good fortune to uh, 
uh, spend a little bit of time out there. Uh, my mother-in-law you know, has a, a summer house out there with her husband. Uh, and uh, our, uh, our steam producer, Bob Campetti, <laughs> actually just moved out to That's the Buckeye right. Lake area. Uh, so, you know, him and his lovely wife, Beth, I'm um, sure enjoyed that yeah, quite a bit. They enjoyed it quite a bit this summer. And, and what, what was that? He's just said in our ear, he's inviting us out. Oh, yeah. Really? <laughs> Having a party? I heard that, party too. Party at Bob's house? <laughs> Did you hear that, Josh? I heard that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Springer for the beer. I heard that, too. <laughs> First and ten for the Gales after their best play of the night. We'll see if they can capitalize on that. Titan Johnson had a nice pass to Casey Fink. Handing off right up the middle to Carson Rainier. Nice little gain of about four on the play. They trail at 24-3, 4-10 and counting here in the third quarter. And even though they're trailing again at 24-3, and that's quite a deficit, but we have seen not this Lancaster team, but the Lancaster team last year, you know, make those comebacks. You know, they had, a you know, an outstanding one against, you know, one of the best teams in the country, literally, uh, yes. with Pick Central last year, down by 14 points with just a little over four minutes, I believe, left to go. So they can make comebacks, so they've got to stay in this game. Johnson again hands off to Rainier. Rainier, nice big hole there, and he's got the first down up to the 40. I think he was surprised that it was that wide open. <laughs> it was wide open. There was just one defender that uh, I almost wonder if it was the scheme for them to leave that guy in block because he almost ran past the play. And Rainier was able to get by him and really run well behind his pads, you know, and, and you know, get that first down for the Gales there. So they've got a little bit of momentum here. Let's, let's hope that they keep this going. First and 10 at the Watterson 40-yard line. Again, it's Rainier. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? But this time, the Eagles do a nice job of stopping him at the line of scrimmage. That's one of the very few times that we've seen a play uh, that off tackle off the right side not go for a, you know, a positive two, three, four, or five-yard gain. So. Yeah. Speaking of uh, Pickerington Central, you mentioned them being one of the best teams in the nation last year. How about this year as well? They're starting off their season tonight playing against Winter Park, Florida, but they're playing that at the Freedom Bowl in Georgia. How about that for a road trip? How about this run by Titan Johnson? Across the 30, first down, Gale. Great run by Titan Johnson, and you're starting to see him get a lot of confidence there. Uh, you know, did it had a nice run, run up there, made a nice cut up field, and got as much as he could before he got tackled there. But, yeah, I, I uh, thought that might have been a misprint or something when you said the team <laughs> out of Florida. I wonder if that's a nationally televised game. Uh, it might be. Yeah, absolutely. When you see, uh, you know, big games like that, top uh, teams in the country, uh, could possibly be. And they're going to Indiana next week to play a game. Wow, crazy. Road Warriors. You know, the Gales trail 24 to 3, but you just gotta, I gotta say, you know, Titan Johnson, stats might not look great tonight, but I think he's done an outstanding job. I mean, what shoes does he have to fill? And Tyler Monk, and, you know, he's coming in, he's, he had very little, if any, playing time in his first two years on this team. And he comes in as a junior, gets his first start, Division I high school football in Central Ohio's top notch. I mean, you're playing against, like we said, top teams in the country, not just the state. He's done a good job. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, you know, now, like I said, his stats aren't going to be that great, but he's, he's kept his poise, and he's doing a good job. Here he's going to fire one down to the end zone. He's got two-on-one coverage, and that's got to be a flag. Yes, it is, as Casey Fink was just tackled in the end zone before the ball even got there. Absolutely, yeah. And I, I totally agree with you, Jared. Johnson's done a really nice job tonight. Um, other than, you know, the, the couple mistakes on, you know, the bad exchanges and things like that. Right. Uh, but, you know, he's done a really nice job. You see him rolling out here, taking a shot down the field. Um, and, yeah, it, it looks like, uh, yeah, that was told. <laughs> Fink was just tackled. Yeah, certainly, you know, tackle there. And it's probably fortunate. It looks like the other uh, defender there might have had a shot at an uh -huh. interception. But uh, good for the Gales that he didn't make that. They called the flag, and uh, Johnson has a chance to uh, get him in the end zone for the first time tonight. I don't know about you guys, but this game kind of reminds me a little bit of the game that Lancaster played against DeSales last year in their second game where yeah. they really started opening it up in the second half, started throwing the ball a little bit more and starting moving it a little bit more, and we're starting to see some of that here in the second half. And, and really, Josh, that, that's a great point. That kind of led to the great season that Tyler Monk had. They passed right. all year long. They had Casey Fink and Max Hamilton. Uh, Casey Fink was all Ohio. And, and you know, that, I think that kind of sparked something. And maybe, like you said, we're seeing it start tonight. Absolutely. And I think it also spurs confidence in the coaches to call those plays when they can see and, you know, perform it in, in, under the lights and live conditions. Yeah. 
We have a timeout on the field brought to you by the Carriage Company, located at 1031 North Memorial Drive. You can check out their website at carriagecompany.com. While we have a break here, I want to see if we can get some shots of our camera guys. Those are the guys that do uh, a lot of hard work out there in the elements. Uh, the only elements tonight other than the heat were the, bu the bugs. <laughs> Had a lot of bugs uh, flying around out there. I know Jason Roush was swarmed with them. Tom and Josh down there on the field swarmed with them. And there's our man Jimmy Spires, 28 years doing this. Wave at us, Jimmy. Give us a wave. Come on. There he there's is. A little bit. There's Jimmy. <laughs> you can see oh, the bugs. Getting... There's Tom yeah. down on the field. Tom does a great job as well. Here is, oh, wow, big hit. Wow. But a good run. That was hey. Max Hamilton. He hops right back up. Yeah, and held on to the football. I have another. Hopefully that's just a cramp. There's Tom down on the field, and Tom is shooting. A shot of Jason. There's Jason. Keep it on Jason there for a minute. We want to say congratulations to Jason Roush, who's taking on, uh, I would say, I don't know if it's his, it could be considered his dream job, but he is doing, he's, he's perfect for the job that he is now taking on, and that is athletic director at Fisher Catholic High School. So congratulations to Jason. Nobody uh, more deserving than, than him for that job and already doing an outstanding job. So congratulations, Jason. Give us a wave. <laughs> Actually, we had two injuries on the field. One is a, looks like to be a cramp, and I don't know what the other one is. That, that looks a little more serious. Yeah, yeah the about Watterson the 20. player looks a little more serious, as you said. No. We got one down for Watterson at about the seven, getting a cramp worked out. The one at about the uh, 19. That's Evan he, Siegel he, down yeah, he, for Watterson. He seems to maybe be, maybe had his bell rung or something. But I tell you what, the, the hit that, I didn't see who laid it, but somebody laid a big-time hit on Max Hamilton. Yeah, yeah, you heard it up here even. <laughs> yeah. So certainly wish for the best uh, for those injured players. You never like to see it, especially in week number one. Yeah, especially Siegel. We can't see. Oh, uh, I think it looks like we just had the other uh, player get up. That's Tanner Mercer, and he's jogging off on his own power. But uh, Evan Siegel, we've called his name quite a bit. Yeah. He's not been in the backfield quite a bit uh, playing hard, and he, he looks like he's walking off. Uh, rather slowly, uh, could be a head injury. Uh, don't want to speculate too much here, but we we'll certainly hope he's okay regardless of what it is. Let's give a shout out to the trainers for both these teams. Uh, Eric Voucher has had a lot of work tonight, uh, had several cramps for, for uh, Bishop Watterson. And of course, uh, for Lancaster, Lee Spring. She's been around for a, a while for Lancaster and just does an awesome job at, at all the different sports. And she also trains student trainers. Uh, so yeah. trainers have a, a, a very, very important job and, and really go unthanked a lot of times. So we thank them for what they do with our student athletes. Second down and six oh. for the Gales. Ball loose on the field. And the Gales must have covered it up. It's going to be bring up a third down. Just real, real quick on the trainers as well. Uh, Eric Boucher, uh, I'm a little partial to him. Uh, we went to high school together. Not oh, really? only that, he was also a trainer of mine at Ohio University. Wow. We were there at the same time, um, and he was a trainer on the football team when I was playing there. So it's so nice to see that you know he's doing you know so well here, uh, you know doing such a nice job for this uh, Watterson team, and I certainly wish him the best. That's awesome. On third down. Titan Johnson led the blocking. He handed it off to Owen oh, Snyder, and then he was the lead blocker to lead Snyder into the end zone for the touchdown. Yes, he was the lead blocker, but he really didn't need much of it no, because he didn't they, have to do anything, yeah, they caught Watterson completely off guard with that misdirection. And it, you know, we were talking how that swarm of the Watterson defense was really, you know, pursuing extremely hard, and it was only a matter of time before they made that call of the misdirection, get them going one way and come completely back on the other. They executed it perfectly and have their first touchdown of the evening. Makes it 24 to nine. On to kick the extra point, Phillips Slater. The left footer out of the hold of Curtis Young. Kick is up and it is good. So the Gales get their first touchdown of the year to make it 24 to 10 with 40 seconds to play in the third quarter. A little bit closer. Yeah, and when you think about Ball it, back in it, they're only down two touchdowns. Yeah, you know, two touchdowns that can be scored very easily. I, I, I say very easily, but uh, this <laughs> Watershed defense has done a great job tonight. Yeah. But it's only two scores, so they are right in this ball game. And again, if they keep this momentum that they've got going, it could be a very close game at the end, nonetheless, of you know how the, the game started out. There you see the shot of the scoreboard. Of course, uh, Lancaster adding that the video board uh, in the last year or two. and. They just do a, a great job with uh, sponsorships here and scrolling on that video board and 
Boy, what a nice addition it is, along with the turf. We saw at halftime, you didn't see it on TV, but we saw it here live at the stadium. As there's uh, Scott Burry and Steve Spangler, our principal and our associate principal down on the sideline. But they were, they had a um, an honor uh, of some people who donate, donated money for this nice turf field. And, boy, what a beautiful facility it is. Yeah, it is. yeah. I mean, it was always a nice facility. But when you think about how far it's come, even in the last two or three years with, again, the, the turf field, as you mentioned, and the video board. Yeah. Uh, it's just a, a great venue to watch a football game in and a credit, you know, again, to the administration and the whole community, really, just to come yep. together, um, make those donations when needed, and support this football team uh, as they've done for such a long time. Of course, the resurfaced track and – uh, you know, now they're able to play. They play soccer here. They play field hockey here. The baseball team practices on this field. You know, many people don't realize that what a huge asset it is to have a turf field because, you know, a lot of those sports that are played in the spring, you know, you have to deal with the weather. Absolutely. You know, and, and when it when it rains for, you know, even an hour hard, you're going to be rained out or you're going to have practice rained out and forced to go inside, but not when you have a turf football field. You come right out, your baseball team, your track, your, foot, your uh, so softball team come right out here on the turf and practice. And I know Lancaster's definitely uh, utilized that. Yeah, it becomes really a multi-purpose function. Drive summary is uh, on our screen, but unfortunately we can't see our screen at the moment. I don't know if I kicked a cord or something's happened, but we just have a blue screen. So <laughs> we'll just let you read the drive summary. <laughs> Lancaster did a nice job. We'll, we'll just yeah. say that. Ten, oh, oh, wow. wow. <laughs> Huge hit there by Curtis Young. Oh, my goodness. It was 10 plays, 80 yards, 4.02 off the clock. But, wow, what a stick right there. Great to see the receiver get right back up. He lost his helmet and everything. He's going to have to come off the field for at least a play. Who was it? 81, That's Josh, Davis you see Boone. that? That, I think, was Young. Yeah, 81. Davis and, Boone. That's Davis Boone. Yeah, yeah. He's had a great game. Watterson yeah. coaches wanted a penalty. I think they thought that Young kind of stood over and taunted after that hit. Now a flag's going to be thrown. That's a flag, yep. So the flag is thrown on the coach, not on Curtis Young. Okay. And I'll be honest with you. If, if Curtis Young stood over and taunted, that'd be a first. One of the <laughs> nicest kids you'll ever meet. <laughs> Doesn't say a whole lot. Either that or the coaches were wanting a, an unnecessary roughness call. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, that could have been it. What a stick nonetheless, my goodness. But Davis is a tough kid, popped right back up, and I bet he'll be in on the I next play. I bet you're right. Hoying to his man in the backfield, who's nice to see back in the ballgame, Tommy Bear. Big third down coming up here for Lancaster. Again, if they're able to get off the field on a three and out, uh, that, again, will keep this momentum going that like they so desperately need here going into the fourth quarter. Looks like the clock's going to run out before we get a chance to run another play. Uh, but they've got to feel good about themselves. Again, within striking distance, only 14 points down, and they're right in this ball game. So we will head into the fourth quarter. Gales trail at 24 to 10, but they've got a big third down, as you mentioned, coming up defensively. Josh, uh, you've been down there on the sideline the entire game, and I'm sure that after that touchdown, and now with this, uh, what looks to be a good defensive stand here, momentum starting to change a little bit. How's it feel down there? Starting to feel a little bit. Uh, Sidelines not quite jumping up down as right. you'd expect, but you think that big hit added on to the touchdown after that, it's going to be a big third down. Really big, great time for a Lancaster takeaway. Have not seen one of those tonight. They had one giveaway earlier tonight, but uh, it'd be nice to have a defensive stop here. Good call, Josh. Look at that, Marion. I'm a tech guy. Yes, you are. I was going to say shout out to our uh -oh. technical wizard here up here, Jared. <laughs> I think we might have a short in this court, but I got it fixed, Josh. Yeah. You're back on the screen for us. <laughs> Get we some duct, duct tape. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those where I have to – I'll just hold on to it and hop on one foot. That, that'll keep it yeah. Keep us on the screen. <laughs> I've been told you can fix everything with WD-40 and duct tape. <laughs> I think if you're it, right. If it shouldn't move, duct tape. If it should move, use WD-40. <laughs> there you go. Good call. <laughs> Regular Bob Vila down there. Here we go. Third down and four for the Eagles. This is a huge defensive play for the Gales. Cannot jump. Curtis Young gets in in the backfield, and that made Hoying have to rush that throw, and he overthrows his intended receiver, who's down with another cramp. Uh-oh. At least I hope it's just a cramp. Looks like he's grabbing his calf. Or it might be a knee there. I'm I hope sure. not. Gosh. It did look like he went down funny, but yeah. I hope he's just holding his. Yeah, it's a yeah, cramp, okay. guys. Good. Okay. It's kind of deceiving. It's not really a warm night. 
Well, I mean, the way he went down, it almost looked like it could yeah. have been a knee, but they're, they're working it like it's a cramp. But how about Curtis Young just getting in there so quickly that Hoying had to just rush the throw? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the pass rush for the Gales has come in, you know, exactly when they needed it to. You know, caused Hoying to have a couple errant throws. That one, again, wasn't errant, but he had to, you know, rush it that much quicker. Um, and the receiver wasn't ready for it by the time it came. So, um, you know, nice job again. The Gales able to get off the field. Hopefully they can keep this momentum going and uh, punch the ball in. And, again, if, if they score here, then they're only down by seven points, and we've got a ball game. Yep. Really haven't seen the Lancaster pass rush get to Hoyne much tonight. Part of that is credit to Watterson's offensive line for protecting him, but also a credit to Hoyne to get rid of the ball so quickly yeah. that pass rush just can't get there. Absolutely. And you know, that, that offensive line, I'm glad you brought that up because they're not real big. I mean, they are, you know, when you look size-wise, Lancaster's got them. However, they're quick. Yeah. I mean, those guys can move down there, and they're doing a great job keeping that Lancaster defensive line, big Lancaster defensive line out of there. Yeah, very quick. And, and schematically, it, it, it's, it's very wise for um, the uh, Eagles to run the offense that they run. Again, quick passes over the middle so you don't force those linemen to hold blocks against schools that they may have a you know, size disadvantage against. Um, so they get the ball out of their hands very quickly and, again, use their speed to their advantage and their quickness you know, laterally across the field and then also attacking the middle of the field uh, with their big tight end, uh, Davis Boone. Yeah. He looks to have uh, two cramps. They looked like they were working out both calf muscles. Now they're going to help him up and try to get him to the far sideline. There's a good look at the Lancaster side. Coach John Carpenter down there. Actually, that's not Coach John Carpenter. That's Georgie. No, that's Georgie. John's up here in the booth. <laughs> Georgie played uh, Marshall University after flying here at Lancaster, graduated in 2007. So you've got uh, Coach Rob Carpenter down there. we got Georgie, you got Bobby, and up here in the booth is John. Bobby's down now working out a cramp from Carson Rainier. As the Watterson player is still getting attended to, now he's going to make his way to the other sideline. That is number three, Cam Nicholson, who's had a good game tonight. We mentioned him. He's a transfer from Dublin, Scioto, and the way the new transfer rules are, they can play the first half of every season, every sport they're involved in, and they have to sit out the second half, right. which is, I think that's a, you know, that's a good new rule. It used to be they, could, uh, set, they had to set out the first half, and play the second half, which really didn't punish anybody. It actually helped teams right. in all sports because you get a, a great player in at the end of the season when you're going into tournament play or playoff play in, in football. So the OHSA re-looked at that and, and changed it. So unfortunately for Cam, he will have to sit out the second half of the season. But I'll tell you what, he's playing hard here in, in week number one, and he's only got four more weeks to do it. Uh, but he's just a junior. So yep. looking forward to having him back next yep. year. Absolutely. Fourth down and four, and the Eagles forced a punt. Max Hamilton back deep to receive it for the Gales. 4th Camp, lower kick, and it's going to be downed right about the 36-yard line. That's where the Gales will take over on offense, trailing 24 to 10. 11:48 to play in the ball game. So we mentioned uh, our camera crew out here in the elements. Let's uh, let's get a look inside the truck. Look at that. Look at that setup in there. We've got. Uh, well, that's technical. <laughs> it's the ultimate multitasker. And there. here's the guys that know the tech stuff. Shane and Donnie. Bob's running the camera. Mason. And that's the boss, Beth, <laughs> statistician. Boss is right. <laughs> and they're staying nice and cool in there, too. That's yeah. right. No bugs in the truck. <laughs> There's a shot of the air conditioner. On first and 10, no gain, or actually short gain. We'll give him two on the play for the Gales. And credit to Mason there. He's playing a little hurt tonight for us. He uh, <laughs> shared a story with us earlier in the game. He, he chipped his tooth before the game started. Are you here. serious? Yeah, chipped his tooth and, and uh, you know, still hanging in there with us. And I tell you, for someone who just has a chipped tooth, he has the best attitude I've ever You almost oh, would have yeah. thought he just spilled coffee on his shirt or something. <laughs> it's like it was nothing. Like, oh, it's fine. It happens. Put it in some milk. Take it to the dentist. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Whoever said broadcasting isn't a dangerous sport. <laughs> <laughs> Going to be a penalty on Lancaster. Somebody moved early. This is what you don't want. When you're down by 14, 
you've got a chance to uh, score one here. You need to kind of get a, a, as quick a score as you can. Unfortunately, your offense isn't set up for quick scores, though. Yeah. And then you're backing yourself up now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can't have penalties. Uh, you know, anything that is, is kind of self-inflicted there doesn't, you know, help, as we're, you know, certainly seeing here. Uh, but, you know, they've got to just take it one play at a time. Not to be cliche, but, th but that is really have to, how you have to approach this. And hopefully they can get seven or eight yards on this play to set themselves up for maybe a third and reasonable type play. Johnson on the option, pitches it out to Sherrick. And, wow, Sherrick made something out of nothing there. He's still on his feet across the 40. What a run by George Sherrick. I thought he was going to yeah. be stopped in the back. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did a great job of making the guys miss there. And uh, the Gales might have something here again. You can tell that he is an incredible athlete, but he is raw. Yeah. He, is, he is really raw. You can tell he hasn't played much football, but he just has that ability here. And I think, it's, again, as so many players for the Gales tonight, as they get that more experience under their belt, the more games they play, the more repetitions they get, you know, by the end of the season, uh, they, they could be really, really scared. Yeah. Third and four for the Gales. Big play here. Curtis Young splits out to the right. It's Sage Hill behind Johnson. Sage will get the handoff and broke the first tackle. Makes positive yardage, but not enough for the first down. Yeah, it's unfortunate. The Gales got exactly what they wanted on that second down play with Sherrick breaking that big one. Uh, so they had a third and four type of play, ran that off, that off tackle to the left side here. Uh, but unfortunately, they didn't get what they want. But they, it looks like they may be going for it here. I can't say that I blame them. You want to keep that momentum going. And as this clock ticks away, you're not, you don't know how many more chances you're going to get uh, to put a drive together and get it in the end zone. They have three timeouts. Do you think maybe they try to draw them off here and then take a timeout? That is a possibility. We'll see. They will run the play. And not going to get it. Wow, what a job by Bishop Watterson trying to see who led that charge. 55, maybe 55 in yeah, there. That's Isaiah, Isaiah Manuel. Manuel. And Manuel's a big boy, perhaps the, the biggest player. I think he is the biggest player on the Watterson roster here. It goes at 6'2", 260 pounds. Uh, so when you're running right at a guy that big, yeah. uh, you really got to make sure you get the push there. And Lancaster was not able to do that on that play. And uh, we're going to go the other way with it. First down, Watterson. Huge stop for the Eagles. They have the ball now in Lancaster territory. First and 10 at the 45. And I don't want to be the defensive coach that has to deal with uh, Jacob Point on a short field here. He could do some damage. Yep. Well, he's going to hand off as a flag comes flying in. That's Tommy Bear. So I think it's just a sideline warning, so that play will stand. Sideline warning on the Gales. Get back coach didn't do, do his job there. <laughs> Get back coach is very important, very important. <laughs> Andrew Bettendorf will split out wide to the left side. Two receivers here to the right. Pulling out of that pistol with Tommy Bear with him. Here's Bear on the carry. Good job by the Lancaster defense. Nice job specifically by the Lancaster front four. They didn't move an inch there. Uh, led by Carson Rainier, you know, get, made a nice play, the first one to make that hit. Um, and, and they've got themselves in, in, in a pretty good, re reasonable situation here with the third and six coming up for the Watterson Eagles. We'll see if they're able to hold. Carson's having himself a good football game, even though his team trails by 14, both offense and defense. He's played well. Absolutely he has, yeah. And he's one of those players. Owen Snyder's another one. Um, Lancaster relies on so heavily to play well on both sides of the ball, and they haven't let them down tonight. Pulling to pass, man-to-man -man coverage out on the far side. Nice defense by Fink to knock it away. Great coverage by Fink there. I mean, just excellent coverage. Just stuck with him exactly. Turned his head at the right time, able to break up the pass um, and, and, and get off the field for the for the Gales here. Very important that he made that play. We'll look here on the replay again. It's just uh, just a one-on-one, mano a mano. Hoyne throws it up and says either my guy's going to get it or your guy's going to get it. Finks makes the play, uh, shows his athletic ability, and, and gets the Gales off the field. Not only is Casey Fink a good uh, football player, but he is uh, headed to Penn State to play baseball next year. That's fantastic. Fourth down and six for the Eagles. Delay game or timeout? I think they 
got a timeout oh called in time. So 8.45 to play in the ball game. Lancaster trails 24 to 10. Watterson faces a fourth down and six at the Gale 41-yard line. They're going to most likely go for it, although you never know. They could pooch punt one here and try to pin him back deep. What do you think, Mario? I would probably think they'll go for a pooch punt, especially with uh, Fort Camp has really shown that he has the accuracy uh, to drop it in there and give them a long field to go. Again, with Lancaster's offense, uh, you know that it takes them a long time. So I think for Water Waterson, the clock is really on their side in this yeah. sense. So no sense in, in you know, trying to you know, make a play when you don't have to. Um, give the Gales a long field here, make them earn that touchdown if they do. And even if they do come down and score, chances are they're going to take a lot of time off the clock and still be down by seven points. So they will punt. Jonah Fort Camp comes on. Max Hamilton goes back to his 10-yard line to receive it. Good snap. And Fort Camp angles it out of bounds. It all depends on where the official says it goes out. He's going to walk up. And Fort Camp's walking off the field kind of gimpy. I'm not sure if he might have uh, had a little bit of a cramp as he tried to punt that way. Huh. Yeah, it looks like he might have. He definitely uh, had something wrong with him physically on that punt. You know, we've seen him do some excellent ones, and, and that was not one of them. And, and he looked hurt as he was running off. You're right, Josh. Hey, while we have a minute here on this change of possession, I know there's a you know there's a lot of excitement up the road in Columbus for Justin Fields uh, coming into Ohio State. But how about down the road in Athens with Nathan Rourke? Uh, there is a lot of excitement around Bobcat football coming up this uh, this fall, and I'm excited to watch him. Uh, as am I. Air Canada, yeah, Nathan That's Rourke, right. and we've got a lot of other uh, key players returning. So. Yep. Titan Johnson, there's one out, he's got fake out there. It's caught at the 31 yard line and all the way down inside the 20. Boy, how about that pass and catch? Excellent on the money pass, fantastic catch. Just great job by Lancaster. They must have heard me up here saying that, you know, probably take them a long time to score, so they raise up on the first play of the game. Excellent call by the offensive staff here. Hit take a shot stride. down the field and they get hit him right in stride. What a great job. Boy, that was a great pass from Titan Johnson. Hit. Casey Fink in stride. He did not miss a step. And here's the replay, Jared. Yep, see? Hey, they flicked the pay, play action pass there, and you see Johnson rolling out and just lets it fly. Fantastic accuracy there. Drops it right in the bed, yeah. bread basket there. Excellent pass and catch. First and 10 Gales at the 16-yard line. Johnson again back to pass. Lops one over to the, but he overthrows him this time. Intended for Fink. He had him, yeah. but just overthrew it. Yeah, he definitely had him on that. Rushed had it a little him. bit. Yeah, yeah, he rushed it. And he knows it, uh, but that's okay. You know, again, after that play, you probably got the, the juices flowing a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> looks like we've got another player down. Uh, that's Tommy Bear again. Yep, looks like he's down again, yeah. Another cramp. This is the second time he's suffered a cramp tonight. Well, and unfortunately, that's what happens, Jared. It's like when you when you get them, you know, it's it's like they keep coming. If yeah. you, you can't get enough fluids in, and it's like you do what you know what you can. If everybody remembers the infamous Le LeBron James cramp game on yeah. uh, the NBA Finals there. It's just something that happens. Once you get one, they seem to come in waves there. Yep. And you get out the pickle juice. You know what they <laughs> use yeah. to help with cramps? <laughs> Let's talk about uh, some of the teams around the area that we're looking forward to uh, covering uh, this year. Of course, we, we mentioned Bloom Carroll earlier with Otto Coons and the excitement around them. I mean, that kid has just uh, done an outstanding job. He's been starting, what, since his freshman year. He's finally a senior. Seems like we've been watching yeah. him forever, <laughs> but uh, he, he can get it done. I'm excited to see him play. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Bloom Carroll's going to return a great team. Uh, you know, of course, you know, Maryland Clear Creek also yes. not to be forgotten. Uh, they played Bloom, Bloom Carroll very tough last year. They'll be right in the thick of things again for that league. Um, you know, we also talk about Burn Union and, and, and Fisher Catholic. Both of them returning very strong teams. They'll play each other, and, and we should, you know, we'll most likely be covering that game. Should be you know, a really excellent battle. Uh, but, again, it's it's such a, a, a nice thing to see, mm -hmm. uh, to see all of these, you know, so many of these Fairfield County teams with really strong teams, good football programs on the rise. Just an exciting time. Yeah. Here's a look at what uh, Lancaster has ahead after tonight's game with Watterson. They've got that game with Cathedral from Ontario, Canada. That that I think this is what third or fourth year that they've hosted them. Yeah, at least the third, right? Yeah, that's next week. That's out. That's also junior high night where they honor their junior high teams. 
Hilliard Darby at Newark, Upper Arlington, Grove City at Pick Central, at Gahanna, home against Pickerington North, and then at Reynoldsburg, which that, that's a tough one. I mean, that's the one last year that, you know, really it kept Lancaster out of the playoffs. Yep. Um, you know, they if they would have won that game, that Week 10 game with Reynoldsburg, they would have been OCC champs outright, yep. uh, Ohio champs, OCC Ohio, and, and then they would have gone to the playoffs. But Reynoldsburg, man, they were tough last year and looking to be tough again this year. Yeah, yeah, they'll be tough. Can you got the Pickerington schools. It's just you know, there's just really no breaks no. in that OCC, especially the Ohio division. Right. Uh, so Lancaster's going to be have their a, have to have their A game every single week. Second and ten. Here's George Sherrick. Sherrick to the 10-5. Touchdown. Touchdown. Another misdirection for Sherrick. And he hit that with a head of steam, Jared. I mean, he straight did. downhill. Saw the opening, took it right to the house. Great play, great call. And looky here, the Gales are down by seven points. Just a little over eight minutes to go. Seven points if Phillips Slater kicks this through. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, let's see, the extra point is never a given. Let's You're not right. Jinx him. <laughs> Slater out of the hold of Curtis Young as you watch the replay. Uh oh, it was a high snap. Young looking has to throw it and it's tipped out of there. Boy, that is a backbreaker there. They do not convert on the extra point. The snap was high. Young was not going to be able to get it down. Now we have an injury. Another Bishop Watterson player down in the end zone. Yeah, our, uh, our viewing audience there wasn't able to see as, as uh, Jared was, was explaining there. Unfortunately, it was just, you know, bad snap there. Um, they did the best they could, tried to, you know, convert the two-point conversion, but it didn't happen. But, again, what a fantastic run by Sherrick. Fantastic play call also. Is this another cramp? I, mean, I would think so, yeah. Have we seen – well, we saw on the sideline one Lancaster player getting a cramp worked out. But, man, this is – yeah, it's a lot. What is this, six, seven cramps we've seen? Yeah, for Bishop it's a lot. Watterson? And I wonder if it's one of the same players, again, that was down before. Sure, we yeah. can't see right now, but I'm sure, you know, we'll, we'll see here in just a second. It's not really hot or humid down here, guys, but I think because it's been a little bit cool this week, maybe players yeah. didn't think they needed to drink as much water earlier yeah. in the week. And, you know, it's hard. Once you start getting cramps, as you said, Marion, it's hard to recover from that during the game. You, you really have to prepare early in the week by drinking plenty of fluids. Yep, absolutely. And I know absolutely. they're you – know, the, I'm sure that the – Training staff at Watterson does stay on them like uh, Lee Spring does here at Lancaster. We see those Lancaster football players carrying around big jugs of water all week long. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, those first few games, the first few weeks of the season, it's just crucial that you, you, know, you have to stay hydrated. You have to take care of your body, and you have to be ready to play. Uh, you know, and it's not easy, especially when you're a team like Watterson and you have so many guys playing both ways. Uh, you know, it, 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 it puts such a demand on your body physically yeah. uh, that, you know, you have to be prepared, and, and it's tough to do. And like I said, unfortunately, once those cramps start coming, it's hard for them to stop. Uh, so didn't, didn't actually see who that player was. Didn't get a chance to do that, but uh, – Hopefully he's, he's okay, whoever that is, and he'll be back in the game and that they can get this cramp problem licked. Well, I tell you what, that uh, missed opportunity on that PAT, that's big. I mean, that makes now, you know, now you have to score a touchdown and get the two-point conversion just to tie. Um, you know, Coach Carpenter's been known to run two-point conversions to win, yeah. but now he has <laughs> to run it to tie. Yep, yep. He if did they that. get a score. Right, right. He did that last year. I believe it was the Upper Arlington game yes. uh, where they went for two at the, at the very end and happened to get it. But uh, they can blame that one on me. I did say that they were down <laughs> by seven points before they actually kicked the extra point and uh, must have jinxed them. Slater kicks a knuckleball. Wow. Bounces completely over the head of uh, Cam Nicholson into the end zone for a touchback. 8-11 to play in the ball game. 24-16. Bishop Watterson. Holds on to that eight-point lead. Gale's defense has done a nice job the last two or three series. Wow, really, this this entire second half. Yeah. And they have, and it, you know, you can tell that uh, Watterson came out with a concerted effort to try to establish the run in the second half, and they've done a pretty good job of that. But uh, similar to how the Gales uh, were, were having issues with just one or two mistakes or penalties that you know, can really kill a drive, and uh, that's, you know, proven to be true for the Watterson Eagles this second half. Pass is complete, but immediately hit and taken down by who was that? Sam Fink, I believe, this time. And the player lost his helmet again. And again, that's Davis Boone. I think he's the one that lost it earlier. Yep. And we've got another Watterson player. I'm not sure which one it is. Looks like it might be number 77, Mason Grainley, uh, who's limping around. Looks like he might be experiencing a cramp wow. now. Yeah. 
Second down and eight. Clock rolls under eight minutes to play in the game. Hoying hands it off to Tommy Bear, who's going to be stopped at the 25-yard line, bringing up a big third down right here, third and five. The Lancaster front four are doing a great job of using their hands to get off blocks. You know, they're not being tied up by those linemen uh, on the Watterson side. Uh, you, you remember the Watterson uh, was having a really nice uh, time with those draws that they were calling earlier in the game, and now those plays are getting stopped and are resulting in a third and long here for the Eagles. Jacob Hoying back to pass over the middle. It's almost picked off. Flags come in. Two Lancaster guys were going after it. Max Hamilton and Eli Rathburn both are shaken up. Max Hamilton is now up, but Rathburn's still down. Is that going to be pass interference? I think it might be. They're talking about it. But it might have been an uncatchable ball because it looked like he wasn't going to get to it either way. Six Lancaster coaches on the field asking him, begging him to pick Defensive it up. Holding. So Rathburn is back up and making his way to the sidelines. And it looks like they called a defensive holding before the ball was released there. So uh, unfortunate break for the Gales there because, again, that's an automatic first down. But yeah. I mean, they had the right call on. They brought a blitz, and uh, it forced Hoyne into an errant throw. He tried to force it in there when it wasn't there. Um, you know, they really sent the house on that one and, and got everything they wanted. But unfortunately, that holding call is uh, going to negate everything. Yeah. Short gain here on first down. I believe that was Bear again, wasn't it? Yeah, yep, it was Barrett. Second down and nine. You guys gave credit earlier to the front four of Lancaster. They've done a great job of really limiting the run of Watterson. They have not been able to establish that uh, here in the second half. Mm -hmm. Dalton Golden, Devin Pearson out there. Here's Hoying across the middle again and through the hands of his intended receiver. I think that's 81, Davis Boone. Davis Boone, don't see him drop too many like that. No, you don't, no, you don't. He's hanging his head. I know he wants that one back because that would have been a first down, a, a, a crucial first down for the Eagles. Yep. Uh, Hoying hit him right in stride, but unfortunately just wasn't able to pull it in. Bring up a third down and nine. Down on the uh, sideline, Drew Solt, the center for the Gales, and Titan Johnson working on some snaps out of that pistol, taking every opportunity they can to get some reps in, and they're going to need it because now it's going to bring up a fourth down and long and a punting situation for the Eagles, and Coach Carpenter going to take a timeout. Cole Smith made a fantastic play on that. You know, crossing pattern again, and we've seen Watterson have some success with that this this uh, this game and, and really all year and even in the last year. Uh, but he he didn't uh, bite it at all. It was ready when the the play came right across it and made the tackle and got him on the ground. That last touchdown that the Gales had, they went three plays, 74 yards, 34 seconds off the clock, and a 16-yard touchdown run for George Sherrick. But it was set up by that long pass from Titan Johnson to Casey Fink. Yep. You see Cole Smith there, number seven. He's uh, awaited his time, and his time is now as a senior. Another really good kid. I got you know, I, I know that I've been saying that a lot, but having a, the, the pleasure of, of teaching at Lancaster High School, I get to see a lot of these guys, and then I get to see them, you know, in the in the lunchroom when I do lunch duty. And special thing about Cole and about Tristan Rothenberger and about uh, Quentin Burke is those three guys in particular. When my son started coming to weightlifting, football weightlifting, at the end of last year as a sixth grader, those three guys. All seniors now kind of took him under their wing. He was scared to death. Wow. Little dude out there, yeah. sixth grader, and those three big guys took him under their wing, and, and I just I can't say thanks enough to them. Just great young men, and, and I'm glad that my son has those guys to look up to. Absolutely. It's really Here's a cool. flag on the punt and a good return coming from Max Hamilton. But we'll see what this flag is. It just looks like it was an offsides or something. Legal formation. Uh, okay. 
sure they'll decline this and just take this field position. Yeah, they're going to decline it. Give them excellent field position inside the 50. On the Bishop Watterson side of the field with 6-10 to play in the ball game, trailing by 8, 24-16. Now remember, if you're just joining us, this was a game that was we thought was out of hand. You know, 24 to 3 just not too long ago, and the yep. Gales have stormed back. Yeah. And we, we kept saying over and over again, hey, you know, a couple plays, a couple scores, and Lancaster can get right back in this game. They had to, you know, keep their heads together and, and, and just play within themselves. And, and they do, they've done just that to their credit. And even with a lot of young guys out here and guys that are playing, you know, meaningful fo football for the first time, they didn't get rattled. They just kept, kept grinding, kept chopping wood, and here they are right back in this football game. Dive right up the middle. That's Carson Rainier. Short game, give him uh, two or three on the play. Second down and seven. Here in just a little bit, we're gonna have uh, our players of the game. From Lancaster, we'll have a, an offensive and a defensive player of the game. And Marion, since you're in the booth, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you have that. Uh, Pleasure of trying to pick that one. All right. Here's Sherrick again. <laughs> Sherrick's making his case for it. He is. He's got the first down, I believe. Or are they going to measure it? Now they're giving it to him. First down, Gales at the Watterson 39-yard line. Johnson gets his play. Coach Apple on the sidelines. Carson Rainier lines up directly behind Titan Johnson, who's under center. Here comes Sherrick. He'll take the handoff. Looks for that hole. Short gain on the play, but Sherrick does a nice job to kind of survey what he's got mm -hmm. ahead of him before just bursting through there. I was just going to say, almost uh, reminiscent of Le'Veon Bell. If mm -hmm. anyone, you know, football, NFL football fans out there, really just patient runner, waits, let his blocks develop, and then hits it when he needs to. He's, you know, just done such a nice job. Can't say enough about the kid, especially understanding, and I didn't know this coming in, that he hasn't played a whole lot of football and doesn't have a lot of experience. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's just a real credit to him. <laughs> Maybe on Bell for the Jets now. Yeah. <laughs> Not tormenting my Browns anymore. Good, <laughs> good to know that. Of course, Le'Veon played his high school football just up the road at Groveport, Madison. The That's field right. now named after him as he paid for a turf field. Here's Max Hamilton. Hamilton cuts back to the middle, has the first down. Still on his feet across the 25. Nice run by Max Hamilton. Nice cut back, great vision by Hamilton there. And we talked about it earlier in the game. To your credit, Jared, you mentioned it. Finding ways to get Hamilton and Fink the ball, um, even though, you know, outside of the, just their normal position. Got a flag back at the line of scrimmage. This one's coming back. That's unfortunate. Oh, I didn't even see that. Wonder what the call is. Yeah, they're going to get a hold, I think, on the left tackle for Lancaster. Here okay, we'll see yeah, the replay. replay. Wow, I don't know. Yeah. Dalton Golden was out there, but I don't, I, don't, I don't know if he had a hold of anybody or not. Yeah, tough call. Especially, I mean, it really puts the Gales back. Now they've got a, it looks like a second and 20. My goodness. Ooh. 418 to play in the ball game. Fink looked like he was going to split out wide. He's going to come back in tighter now. And you'll and notice. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Jared. No, you notice right. we, as we get a timeout by the Gales here, you notice we talked about earlier how it, you know, it doesn't take much for the coach maybe to lose confidence in a certain you know, play or a set that they have. And ever since that shotgun play that um, uh, went errant and was uh, low and to the left of Johnson, I don't think we've seen the Gales line up in a shotgun yeah. set since. So uh, everything up under center, in tight, even when they've thrown the ball, they've done the same there. You know, I'm glad you mentioned losing confidence in players and things like that. I saw a really great um, short video clip of Coach Frank Solich uh, this week, and somebody asked him about, you know, you, you've got a young player here, you got a young player there, and you know, what, you know, what do you, what's your mindset when they when they have a mistake? And he said, our mindset is not to just yank him out of the game right away. Mm -hmm. You know, he said that's not what we're about. You yeah. know, one mistake, you know, it's not going to define them, and, and we they cannot play in fear that they're going to get yanked out of the game just because they made a mistake. And I, I, that's awesome. Coming yeah. from a big time college football coach like Frank Solich and. 
You know, that, that's I, I really respect that. Yeah, yeah, and, it, and it's the right thing to do. Again, you, you recruited those guys, and I, I think as a, as a coach, you really need to trust uh, the decisions that you made uh, to bring those guys in and, uh, you know, allow them. If you put them in that position, you know, give them a chance to be successful. Even if they make a mistake, yeah. you know, allow them a chance to shake it off and get it back for you. Second and 20. Titan Johnson rolling out, looking to pass. Fires one down there. One-on-one -on -one oh. coverage, and Curtis Young was the intended receiver and could not haul it in. Great defense. Trying to see the number. Josh, you see who that was on man-to-man -man coverage? Yeah, man? he was going step for step with Tyler Young. And uh, looked like you, uh, Tyler Young got a good hand in there to break up the concentration of Curtis Young. So it was Curtis Young against Tyler Young there, huh? Yeah, really nice job there by Young. But as we look at the replay here, because it, it looked like they did have a step on a number, number 14 there, Curtis Young did, did have a step, but uh, Tyler Young was able to make up the ground as that ball hung in the air just yeah. a tad too long. I was going to say, I bet you if Titan watches that one back, he's going to say, man, I, I put a little too much under it. I need to lead him a little more. That's right. Uh-oh, right. and they're just going to back the gales up more. And now a spike of the football. Titan's got to know he can't do that, or that could be another penalty out of frustration. Yep. Understandably so, but you're right, Jared. You got to keep com your composure. Hopefully, you don't, you know, compound the situation, and yeah. make it worse. They were but also fighting the play clock there, and that I think led to that false start, trying to hurry up and get that ball snapped. Third yeah. down and 25. And that's the unfortunate thing, uh, Josh. You talked about earlier that uh, there is a, a you know, new play clock. Maybe you can tell us about it after this play. Sure. Johnson again, back to pass. He's got pressure, he's gonna have to throw on the run, and he has to keep it, and he's brought down at the 49-yard line. So the new rule this year is after the play is immediately over, the play clock starts at 40 seconds and counts down, unless there's some sort of dead ball or stoppage, and then it'll reset the 25, just like the college or NFL game, but that's a new high school rule this year, huh. and, and places here like Fulton Field where they have the play clocks visible on the field, you can see that, but the officials uh, for fields that don't have play clocks will keep that as they normally would. Mm -hmm. So fourth down and 22 for the Gales. Sherrick will stand. Beside Titan Johnson, now reset, and a timeout going to be called. Coach Carpenter going to call his last one. And I think that was just out of a little, little bit of confusion there. Yeah. It's like some confusion in the backfield for the Gales. Yeah, I certainly expected the Gales to come out in a punt formation yeah, and just to too. trust their defense. But um, maybe they knew something that we didn't, uh, or maybe there was just some confusion as to far as what's going on. But a smart thing by Coach Carpenter, even though, you, you know, it is your last time out, but, you know, very crucial time. Just, you know, take your time, talk it over, and uh, figure out what you need to do in order to put yourself in a position to be successful for the remainder of the game. It's really a tough call with 3.12 to go, down by eight. You only before that had one time out left. You know, if you punt it, you may not get the ball back either. Yeah, and if it were third and or if it were fourth and twelve or fourth and fifteen, I might agree with you, Josh. Right, right. But it's, uh, it's I, don't, I don't know too many offensive coordinators that have something for fourth and twenty-two that they have a high degree of success, of uh, a confidence in. That's true. <laughs> So here we go. Empty backfield for Titan Johnson. 3-12 to play in the ball game. His team trails it by 8, 24 to 16. Fourth down and 22. Johnson over the middle. Oh! Owen Snyder almost made a great catch that would have been a first down had he been able to haul it in, but just a little bit out of his reach. Yeah. And as uh, play calls for fourth and 22 go, that was as good as uh, you're yeah. going to get. You know, send the guy up the seam and uh, hope he, uh, you know, uh, Johnson's able to thread the needle there between the backers and the safety. And he did a pretty nice job of it as we look here on the replay. Uh, laid it just in there, but just over the outstretched arm there yeah. of Owen Snyder. Uh, tough break there. Snyder might have, it. might have felt a little bit of that pressure coming across that's the middle true, like that. That's true, that's true. Yep, only takes a half a second. Yeah. First and 10 for Jacob Hoying and the Watterson Eagles. We'll hand it off to Tommy Bear. We can hear the coaches to our right saying stay in bounds. Of course, I mean, you know, no timeouts left for Lancaster. There's that coaching staff, including Bobby Hoying, the father of Jacob. 
And we've talked we talked about him earlier, uh, Jared. You know, obviously uh, uh, Jacob uh, comes by it honestly. Has yeah, a lot of good absolutely. genes because Hoyne was an amazing player in his own right. I uh, see him here for the Philadelphia Eagles after uh, following a, an excellent career there at Ohio State. Um, you know, won a lot of games, uh, just short of a Big Ten championship, I believe. Had a tough loss to Michigan. Uh, but his senior year, that was as good a team as any in the nation. Yeah. Uh, and had a lot to be proud of in his career, college and pro. Absolutely. Here's Tommy Bear with the carry as the clock rolls down just over two minutes. And I, I do have to say, Marion, uh, you, know, you, don't, you don't get to come up to the press box a lot. But, you know, Tim and I up, up here, especially at Lancaster, because we're right on the same level, very close proximity with the uh, visiting team's coaches. And i got to say, the, the Watterson coaches have been nothing but class. We get a lot of coaches up here who we have to cover our mics a lot. <laughs> uh, and these guys yeah. have, have not been that way, nothing Absolutely. but class and, um, and encouraging to their team. And, you know, we haven't heard anything that, that shouldn't be going over our airwaves like, like we do a lot oh, yeah. when we're here at Lancaster due to opposing coaches, but these guys have done a great job. Yeah, yeah, credit, you know, the kids are a reflection of the coaches, and the coaches nothing but class, and the kids have shown nothing but class as well. So I uh, can't say en enough good things about the Watterson program and, and the character of people uh, that are in, in that program. Fourth down coming up for Watterson. Minute and 25 to play here in the, in the ball game. 24 to 16, Watterson on top of the Gales. And here's where those timeouts that, unfortunately, the Gales had to spend earlier really come back to bite you. Yeah, because well, that clock is just ticking away, and there's nothing they can do about right. it. Right. Watterson has one left, and they're going to wait till the very last minute. Coach Kennedy going to wait till that play clock gets down to one to call his timeout. That'll put it under a minute to play in the game. And that's when they call it at one, and 55 seconds to play in the ball game. What do you think? Do you pin him back, or do you surprise him with a with a play here on fourth and five? Oh, I pin him back. There's no need to get cute here. Your defense has done, has done a really nice job. So uh, I think they're, they're, you know, just play it safe here. Go ahead and pin him back, and uh, we'll see what happens. Well, this timeout gives us a chance to uh, name our players of the game from Lancaster. Let's do our offensive player of the game first, brought to you by Fairfield National Bank. Fairfield National Bank knows when life gets real, you need a banker who cares about your story. Take Lauren, for example. Her father passed. Lauren, uh, after her father passed, Lauren knew her mother should, uh, should move in with her. That's why they sat down with one of our bankers. Together, they got the attention and accounts they needed to navigate the transition. And Lauren found the free time to finally learn to take uh, to make mom her mom's favorite pie. We call that banking built for living. Come by or visit FairfieldNationalBank.com to find an account built for your life. Fairfield National Bank is a division of Park National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. And after this defensive play for Lancaster, we'll get their offensive player of the game. You have somebody in mind, Marion? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I think I do. Uh-oh, high, oh, high snap. Goes way over the head of the punter, and he's just going to have to fall on it inside wow. the 25-yard line. What a break for the Gales. Talk about a game changer, and we saw that happen earlier, but uh, uh, fortunately back then for the Waters and Eagles, Fort Camp was able to bring it down, but not this time. The snap just sails over his head, goes back another 10, 15, 20 yards. He's got a fall on it. And now Lancaster, believe it or not, down by eight points, has, uh, has the ball inside of uh, the, the Waters from 25-yard line with a chance to score and perhaps tie this game with a two-point conversion. Wow. I had just thought about that Michigan-Michigan State play uh, from a couple of years yeah, ago when yeah. you were asking about whether they should punt or not. <laughs> and I said play it safe, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was, fortunately wasn't safe. Oh, oh my no. goodness! Now the snap goes over Titan Johnson's head, and he has to fall on it. Oh, man. Inside the 45, and the clock's going to continue to roll. And they don't have any timeouts. No, oh, my don't. goodness. Wow. Oh, man. And now, flag on the play. Yeah, flag over on the far side. Let's see who. Looks like someone lined up in the neutral zone. I think it was Lancaster. Oh, oh my god! We're going to go back even further. What an unbelievable turn of events. No kidding. And the clock's going to run as soon. Yep, as soon as they set it, here it goes. Second down and a mile for the Gales. 
at 26 seconds and counting. They need to get the snap off. Johnson back to pass. Fires one down the side. Oh, he's, he's behind got big, him. Big, he got him. Catch. And he's out of bounds inside the 15. Wow. What a ball. What a ball and what a, what a catch. Unbelievable. And he got out of bounds. Wow. Fantastic job there by the girls. And, that, and that's the ne that never quitting, you know, attitude that we talked about, Jared. Just unbelievable. Great throw there. Great throw by Johnson. 18 seconds to play in the game. Again, remember, Gales have no timeouts. First and 10 at the 13-yard line. Curtis Young, Casey Fink out to the right, Max Hamilton to the left. Titan Johnson rolling to the right. Hits his, uh, his up man, and he's out of bounds. Inside the 10. No, they're, oh, they're oh, way, wow. winding the clock. They said he did not get out of bounds, and Lancaster doesn't have a timeout left. Gotta they got to spike it. Are they going to get the, the playoff down to two, down to one? And the clock oh, is at no. zeros. Well, but hold on. The officials are saying, hold on. The back judge is coming in. I think he's going to add a second. Yeah. They're going to add one second. Yes, they're adding one second to the clock. Wow. Wow. So apparently he did not get out of bounds on the far side. The clock continued yeah. to roll. Boy, and I'm not on that far side, but I thought for sure yeah. he got out of bounds. I know. Jared. My goodness. Well, it comes down to this. Well, and, and credit again to the Eagles. They had already come onto the field, and the coaches were able to corral them and get them off the field. No yeah. one got a penalty. No one, you know, acted up or anything like that, causing the, you know, the refs to, to throw something on there. So they're right here. Here we go. One second on the clock. And a flag, delay, delay of game. game. Wow. Actually, that's not a bad penalty, guys. That gives you a little bit more room to work with, I think, in this situation. And also, I think you can calm your team down after yeah. all of that. Yeah. Yeah. You might be right, but again, that clock's going to start as soon as they set that ball. So they don't have any time to waste. Watch the seam here. Johnson back to pass. It's Fink down there. He's got it! it! Touchdown, Gales! Wow. Unbelievable. Oh my goodness. Man-to-man -man coverage. Casey Fink said, I've got, I've got this one. Wow. And sometimes that's all it is, Jared. It's just throwing it up and saying, Richard my athlete's better than your athlete, and I'm going to let him make a play. And Fink did that two times in a row. What a great play. But Lancaster's not out of the woods yet. They still got to get this two-point conversion just to tie the game and go to overtime. They have to convert here. Clock is at zeros. Um, and we talked about that extra point coming back to bite them. Had they made that, they could kick this yep. extra point. Um, but now they've got themselves in, in a tough situation. They've got to convert this. Here we go. Two-point conversion to tie it up with no time on the clock. Titan Johnson takes a snap. There's nobody out there. And uh. it's incomplete. And Bishop Watterson survives to win in week number one, 24 to 22. Wow, what wow. a ball game, what a finish. What a finish. And even though it didn't come out the way they liked, uh, Jared, you've got to really give credit to the, to the continued fighting yeah. of this Gale football team. Yeah. I mean, there were so many times that they just could have been completely out of it, but they kept fighting, as they always do. And it's such a credit to, to Coach Carpenter and his staff. Yep. Uh, you know, and again, this one hurts. Uh, but as you can see him right now, he's ushering the guys on the field saying, come on out, shake hands. You know, it's the first game of the season. We've got a lot of football left to play. Let's show some class. I know we're hurt. Uh, but uh, again, just, just great football game all the way around. All right, let's get to that offensive player of the game uh, brought to you by uh, Fairfield National Bank. You know, did that last drive <laughs> change your mind at all, Marion? <laughs> oh, it just might have. I think had you asked me about four minutes ago, I would have said uh, George Sherrick. And while he had an amazing game, oh, my gosh, Casey Fink. Yeah. Those last two plays of the game, just, to, you know, to get the girls within striking distance, just uh, I, I can't say enough about him. Can't say enough about him. Just an incredible athlete, uh, incredible football player. And, again, the confidence and the bravado that he showed yep. uh, to make those plays when the ball was in the air and, and, just, and just wanting it more than, than the Watterson players there. Uh, you can't say enough about him. And, again, it di didn't result in a win, but uh, 
very, very impressive nonetheless. So congratulations, number 12, Casey Fink, our offensive player of the game, brought to you by Fairfield National Bank. Tonight's defensive player of the game, brought to you by the Edwards Insurance Agency, specializing in providing personalized insurance coverage that meets the needs of our individual clients. Contact Todd or Dale Edwards today. And Marion, I, I don't know. I, I you know, we, we called a lot of names in that Lancaster defense, but how about Carson Rainier? I think he had a yeah. great game on both sides of the football. Yes. You know, I think he's he's uh, worthy of being recognized uh, because he, he he played his heart out on both sides tonight. Yeah, yeah, I, I would certainly agree with you. You know, uh, uh, Curtis Young had a, had a really nice yes. play or game as well. Made a lot of great plays, uh, but I would agree, Rainier, uh, just an excellent job. Uh, didn't you know? Uh, kept fighting again, and, and when you play on both sides of the ball, it's a, it's a credit to your stamina uh, and your your ability to uh, to keep going no matter how tired you get. And he did a nice job tonight, and, and certainly worthy of that award. Final stats tonight are brought to you by Dr. Jeffrey Wilson, DDS, with over 35 years of experience. Dr. Jeffrey Wilson and his staff are committed to provide the best dental services to their patients. Happy patients make perfect smiles, and Dr. Wilson and his staff will make sure your dental health and comfort is their top concern. Accepting new patients, he's currently located in Bremen, but he'll be expanding and bringing his years of experience to Lancaster. This fall, the fall of 2019, his office can be reached at 740-569-7563 to make an appointment. Let's check those uh, final stats. It was kind of lopsided that first half, but I think uh, we're going to see that it evened out. Lancaster had a good second half. Yes, they did, especially through the air. 127 passing yards, and again, I think those were all in the second half. Lancaster did not have a passing yard in the first half, uh, so they were able to move the ball when they had to, and and again, got right at at the end of the game uh, right there, but unfortunately couldn't make the plays at the the at the very end to uh, to pull it out. But uh, a great game by the Eagles, too. They've got a lot to build off of. A few mistakes, but 206 yards passing. Hoyne did an excellent job. Uh, but you see there the big number there for the Gales, 12 penalties. They've True. got it. They've got yes. to cut those down. Uh, can't, some, can't, some of those came at crucial times, and they just can't have those. Just continue to shoot themselves in the foot. Let's go down to the field. Uh, final thoughts from uh, Josh Messerly on the sideline. Josh, I, I don't know if I remember – a uh, more entertaining, more exciting week one game than this. Yeah, there are very few that you can uh, put right up there with this one, guys. I mean, you hit the nail on the head, Marion, talking about that the, the Meister has some mistakes, certainly. But I think the takeaway for the coaches going into next week is the fight, the grit that this team showed in the second half. They were down 24-3 to at one point. They could have packed it in and got rolled up in this game, but they fought back to the very last play and just came up short in overtime, or excuse me, trying to force overtime. Look at that shot there, Josh. Good uh, good call there, Josh. But uh, that shot uh, before the Gales got up off their knee, did you notice every eye on the coach? Absolutely. Every eye. Nobody yeah. looking down, nobody hanging ahead, every yeah. eye on the coach. That's respect. Yeah, and, they, and they're going to be just fine. Again, yeah. they had a long season to go. Uh, they, they've got some things that they can build off of tonight. A, a, you know, a lot of stupid mistakes, a lot of stupid penalties. But, again, it, it, a lot, for a lot of these folks, this is really their, their first crack at meaningful football on a Friday night. Um, and they were right there in it. And you can see, you know, especially with the Cherick and Johnson, yeah. those guys, they got better as the game went on. They're going to continue to do that as the season goes on. And they still have a chance to have a really, really nice season. I know the schedule isn't, uh, doesn't get any easier, and it's, it's, it's a pretty daunting uh, schedule there. But uh, they've got an opportunity to, to put something together. Week one down, nine to go. Josh, great job down on the sideline tonight. Nice having you with us. Thank you. Likewise, you guys did a great job. Morion, uh, fun having you up in the booth tonight. Great job, my man. Thank you. It was a, re- a little different being on this side of the glass, but I certainly appreciated it. I have a new appreciation for what you guys do over here, and uh, <laughs> it was fun. It was fun. So happy to be here, happy to do it, looking forward to the rest of the season. Again, I want to say thanks to all of our sponsors uh, making tonight's uh, telecast possible. Also want to say thanks to our entire Interphase Video Productions crew. Uh, they do a great job, and this is a great way to start out the season. Again, your final score tonight from Fulton Field in Lancaster, the Bishop Watterson Eagles take down the Lancaster Golden Gales in an exciting contest, a final score 24-21. to 21. For Josh Meshley and for Marion Royster and our entire Interphase Video Productions crew, I'm Jared Stewart. Have yourselves a great night, everybody. Sports presents the Buffalo Wild Wings High School Football Game of the Week. Brought to you by Fairfield Medical Center, Ohio University Lancaster, Standing Stone Bank, North Body Shop, Dawn's Furniture, South Central Power, the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities. 
Fairfield National Bank, Jeffrey Wilson DDS, Matt Taylor Kia, Fairfield County Adam H, the Frankie Smith Funeral Home, Fairfield County Parks, the Edwards Insurance Agency, Dagger Law, the Carriage Company, Connor Insurance Agency, Personal Touch Party Rentals and Events, the Huddle Tire Company, Fairfield Federal, Lines Auto Service, Sheridan Funeral Home, and Buckeye Lake Marina. This has been an IVP Sports Production.